All right, well then, you know, let's let's go and do this. Let's do that. Episode 476 of the Shaniella. What is up? Me having to fix this video thing. I thought I had that set. Here you go. It's all good. It's all good. What is up? You know, one of these days, I actually want us to go back and revisit Skype. Really? I can't just just for testing purposes only because well, um, like they uh, they introduced that NDI stuff like like earlier this year. Okay. So, I'm curious. You know, I just want to see how that goes. Okay. Even if it's just for like one episode. Okay. 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 So um, so how are you? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm so okay. ready for the holidays. Like the last couple years, like well, okay, last year was the first year that I was like super looking forward to the holidays, and okay. th I thought that was bizarre. And I'm feeling that same way right now. So, like, I am ready to just skip over Thanksgiving and just go right into like Christmas. And I am absolutely determined that in the next three days i'm gonna have my christmas tree set up and ready to go before thanksgiving like okay i i wanted it up on november 1st and yet everybody okay. was like okay. no you can't do that you can at least wait till after thanksgiving because it's not right and i'm like you know what i waited i put it off for three weeks you can do that if that you want you yeah. can do whatever you want it's like your after tree I know, I know. So excited, and my son's kind of excited because he's like the Christmas and Christmas tree ambassador. It's always his duty to put the tree up and decorate it. No, nice. so it's, it's turned into his thing for like the last three, four years, and we don't do the real tree thing anymore. We do the fake tree. Yeah, I heard you just... mention that on the stream. I think. Yeah, it's it's too much of a hassle for us now to have a real tree because we can't simply like we don't have a service for somebody to come by and pick up our tree. So we have to go and bring it ourselves and I don't have a truck, so I can't do that anymore. OK, um, so it's just it, and it's just more a little bit cost effective to just have a fake tree rather than buying a real one. OK, OK. That's uh, that's where we're at, and he he decided he wanted to have a white Christmas tree for the last for the next several years, and we'll just decorate it in colors with whatever ornaments. So he chose black ornaments with a little bit of silver and red throughout there. That's nice. I'm excited. Pictures? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, we'll, so we'll I'm looking forward that. to. I'm looking forward to pictures. So 476 seems like we haven't recorded for about two weeks, I would say. Those two weeks uh, felt like, like two months. <laughs> it did. It did. So so guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Head over to the show radio.info for slash listen and subscribe. Use the hashtag TSR pod uh, to check in with us and let us know where you're listening from. That kind of a thing. Uh, first things first, um, since we haven't been around for a while, Stanley. Daniela. That news hit everybody so hard. Like I was I was shocked. I mean I I hate to I hate to put it that way that it's like something that you have to expect especially considering he he lived a very full life. He did. And he brought so much joy into a lot of people's lives and I think there was a tweet that somebody posted out. I, I can't I can't find it now. I thought I favorited it, but it was something that was it was it was tweeted a few years ago or something like that. And it was just a re repost that somebody mentioning that one of these days you're going to have like this Marvel movie that you watch. that will be different from all the rest. And at the end, it would be, you know, in memory of and it was going to be Stan Lee. So it's like, wow, even even though, you know, it's coming because it's that's a cycle of life. You know, it happens. People pass on. You still never really prepare yourself for that. So you know no, when you know, you when it when it comes out. Which I man, what is the next? What is the next Marvel movie? Um, is that is that Captain Marvel? I think it. No. Yeah, I think it might be. 
Captain Marvel. <laughs> um, yeah. It it's gonna be it's gonna be something else. Twenty nineteen, yeah, Captain Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of wonder, like, did they pre-record? Like, did they record his cameos already, or? I hope so. I mean, they might they might do holograms and stuff for for him and and CG him into the stuff to remember to remember him. I wouldn't be surprised if they go that route. Or even if like I, I'm also like thinking Spider Man him swinging around through the city and like he has his own billboard, and that's right. how I don't know what he'll be advertising. But I think the other really cool thing that somebody mentioned is that how cool would it be if um because you had you had stan lee he was like a dj he was um a mailman a bus driver he was all these different cameos and all these different things so uh somebody like mentioned like how cool would it be if like these superheroes like hey i have like this you know this funeral i have to attend for a friend and then they all show up and end up just being like stan lee (laughs) and they all Mm. end up being the same person i don't know there's like all these Really touching and really cool ideas that I've seen posted out there. Yeah, it's it's definitely sad. Like even even back in the day, I remember uh, when I used to live uh, in Haiti, I used to read uh, different comic books and stuff. Whether it was Spider Man, Iron Man, and and any of those those characters, it was just like wow, you know, uh, the the Thing, uh, Fantastic Four, it, like all those different characters that just. Um, we started seeing on screen later on you know what i mean it's just it's just amazing uh the world that's been created with uh, all these uh characters and i was i was shocked when i saw the news i was just like what i I was shocked but um definitely some great memories there and watching everything that's coming on screen because of his inspiration uh, to create what he has such an amazing life you know so yeah word i'm i'm lucky that we got to live during a time where we still got to experience this man and all of his creations and just to have him in our life for this generation and for my son to even know who stan lee is and to recognize Absolutely. that, that I, I think that's cool. Absolutely. So, so you, so you have that. So, so rest in peace, uh, the great Stanley. Um, but there's a, a whole bunch of stuff that's been happening. I mean, I mean, I can I can go from the party bus stuff to to sodium intake, Daniela. <laughs> I mean, I need to know what's going on with you. What's up with the sodium that you're about to drop? This is a personal thing. I wouldn't say it's directly at Avermedia, but it's enough salt to last me to like the end of the year. Um, So everybody knows that I was part of the Dream Streamer contest and I was, you know, um, I felt I joined in a little bit late, but I was still, I think, one of the first six. No. First seven, I think. First seven people who signed up for it. So yeah, yeah, to promoting your, your... your channel and your message and their their whole um theme was um dream stream and and you know share and and <sighs> yet people to vote on it and then from from those the people who voted they had like the finalists the finalists okay. who are going to be streaming at at TwitchCon, which they did have people, you know, they gave the option for people to um, stream at TwitchCon as well too. Uh, the yeah, brew tryout was that? stuff. That was cool. That was fun. Okay. And the people there that were, um, the people there that were working there wasn't directly Aver Media. They were actually just the PR company that Aver, Aver Media was working with, and okay. they are also the same people who were running the, the contest. So they opened it so that people can stream and check out their their products and. And it was really cool and it was really nice. And they also had it so that the finalists over um, for this contest would be there because although it was optional, it was heavily suggested that we stream there because the whatever the 30 minute video that we had while we were there that was recorded um, would be submitted 
along, along with the original video so that when they came to judging, they're going to be looking at all that. They're going to be looking at your past vlogs. They're going to be looking at your streams. They looked at your, your social media. And I'm like, okay, well, that sounds cool. I mean, they really want somebody who's really promoting. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, right. It is a lot of stuff, but it's, they, they really want to make sure that the person that they choose or the top five people that they choose to win their contest, you know, convey that message. I'm like, awesome. I feel like I felt so confident that, you know, I did a great job at that no matter what they looked at. Um, I woke up on the 15th to an email saying that I wasn't chosen. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Um, but I also the didn't even... The 15th of November. The 15th of November. That's when they chose their right. winners because they had one first place winner, um, one second place winner, and three places for third place. Like finally. Three places for third. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. they had they chose three pe people for the third place. So it's not like That's third, ambitious. fourth, and fifth, but they had that. So it's pretty much five five ways to possibly win. Um I didn't get any of them. And I was in shock. It was like I didn't even get a finalist, like a runner up or like, okay. So I went to go look at, um, who won. Okay. And, and honestly, I thought it was the other people that I was, you know, competing against that were there majority of the time. And the person who won, like I, I ended up having somewhere like 384 votes. I w which really, if you went by votes alone, I was kind of like in fourth or fifth place. Okay. Um, which is third. Yeah, which is their third. Okay. Thank but, you. But um, yeah. So the person who won signed up while at TwitchCon. They used his thirty-minute video while at TwitchCon. Um, he submitted that. He had seven votes. And that's it. Wait, wait, what do you mean? He had wait, seven wait, votes wait, wait, on wait, his wait. video. What do you mean? Yeah. But seven doesn't compare to 300 plus votes? Apparently. Apparently. So, so how did I they... went. I don't know. I really don't know. And I, um, I looked at who um, only one person in those five placements that was actively in the contest with us at the same time had one of those places. I think he came in like, I think he was one of the third place winner th there. So I okay. went to the person who won, who won the contest with his seven votes. And I was like, oh, maybe he tweeted out a whole bunch and stuff. And he had this great message. Not a single, I think, no, I could. He had two tweets. He had two tweets that had to do with a contest period. Um, the first initial one saying that he was going to be streaming at the booth and the second one to say he joined the contest. Okay. Um, I went to like I went full on like there's got to be something that makes this guy mind blowingly like number one, who blew out the original six seven of us. Right. And um, I was like, there's like your vods are just as good as the rest of ours. Right. How did you win with seven votes? <clears throat> yeah, how did they do that? Because I'm looking at votes right now. I see 145, 7, 5, 6, 399, 72, 386, 69, uh, 2587, 27, 12, 142, 579, and 157. And he won with That's seven votes. That's interesting. And I, I sat there in complete <clears throat> shock, and I'm like, I'm not going to be upset. Like, um, I am try I tried so hard to look on the bright side of things because I'm not mad at the person who won. First of all, I'm I was very happy that he won. Um, but the he's system a, he's doesn't a, make he, sense. The system doesn't make sense, but that's on Aver Media side. That doesn't have anything. I I don't take it. It's not going to be personal against the person who won because right, right, right. I mean it's not like he persuaded. Well, he wasn't his decision for him to win. And he's he's right. a young kid. I think he's twenty years old. He's up and coming. He's a very very positive, very um, bright person. Looking at his vods, looking through his stuff, but like just sitting there thinking, like, are you gotta be kidding me? And I looked at the other people who were ahead of me on votes, and I wanted to see what their responses were, and they did not have any positive responses about what happened. Um, and I'm like, I'm glad Nobody I'm not the. It. 
I'm glad I'm not the saltiest one here. <laughs> okay. But I didn't I didn't openly put myself out on Twitter like that because that day I'm like, I got nothing nice to say right now. If I have nothing nice to say, I'm gonna hold that. Let it go. Cause again, it's not like it's like yeah, I can tweet out at, at Aver Media all I want, my my anger for it, but what's it gonna solve? Nothing. And then just like I don't want to deal with any tweets of like you mad bro and like no nah, I don't want to do that. I don't I don't want to do that. I mean yeah, it, it is what it is. I'm gonna take that in strides because that's all you can really do. I'm just I'm so confused how that entire contest was held. Like okay, so what technically, is it? <laughs> right, right, right. So technically, as I'm looking at these votes, the person that should have won if it was according to votes is this twenty-seven twelve person. Yeah. That's the highest. Mm -hmm. And then second would have been 2587. And then thirds would include, uh, let me see, thirds would include 399, 386, and um, some of those votes, though. Some of those votes, though. Um, yeah. Hi there, Ruru. Um, it's funny because the voting was supposed to stop October 31st. What's up, Rue? What's going on? The, okay. Okay. They allowed the voting to continue right up until the 15th when they decided the winner. Okay. So they never closed the voting. That is weird. Okay. Got it. I think I, I, think I get it. <laughs> as yep. much of it as I can. Okay. So, so, so fair enough. Yeah. Um, that, so that's how that went down. I didn't, I didn't place. I... They the rulings that they had, they didn't stick to it. <laughs> I don't like how you set these rules and you didn't stick to your rules. Like I don't. All right, so 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 the uh, the background of that, you know, uh, I do want to say from what I recall you stating to me is that you recorded that video in like one shot, right? One take, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. Um, you did the very best that you could. You entered. Right, because mm -hmm. because that's that's a big deal too. Because it's like all these contests comes out, um, and sometimes we don't enter when we have the ability to. So I, I would say definitely kudos to you for even putting yourself out there like that. Because there's a lot of individuals who thought about entering and they did not. Right. Uh, so the experience of going through that process, which I'm sure it's not your first contest, nor is it going to be your last, but the fact that you went through the uh, process to do that. Um, definitely uh, shout outs to you for that. That's, that's good stuff. It's definitely interesting. You know what's the killer though? Is that even though the voting, the voting did determine exactly who the number one winner was going to be, but our voting points counted for 50% of their overall. Seven votes. I don't get it. <laughs> Seven <laughs> votes. I don't get it. That's a good number. It's a good number. Seven is a good number. It's a number of completion. <laughs> <laughs> I can't right now. Okay, Danielle, let's move <laughs> on to, to the next thing. Okay, so I had a good time uh, in Cancun. Uh, first time to Mexico. Not the first time being, you know, on an international uh, spot. Uh, first time for my family to be out in an interna uh, international spot, which I was excited for them. Um, more so because I remembered subconsciously the process of traveling and going through customs and stuff like that. And it was the first time that my family was experiencing that, which was neat to see and watch. Um, but we got there, had a good time. I was there for... Uh, my sister's wedding that was fantastic had a good time party and all that good stuff uh first um spot we we're at was an all-inclusive uh spot where the food and everything included and then the other spot was more like a um what do you call those things timeshare type spot which is where we spent the rest of our days either doing volleyball or chilling by the beach and that kind of a thing so um it was dope uh, so for those who who sent good vibes, prayers, and all that stuff, we went, we got back safe, obviously, because I'm here on the mic again. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, pictures, you know, 
all that good stuff, memories created and all that. So it was really nice. I'm so jealous of all of your, your videos and your pictures. What do you mean? Because it looked like so much fun and it looked so good. How many suits good. do you have too? I was like, man, that is one good looking suit. You looking fly over there too? Oh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. You and your entire was, family look good. Like that looked like a was, great vacation. It was good. It was definitely good to be there. Um, but see the thing with the suit, like most of my suits now do not fit because of the weight that I lost. So I had to get remeasured for that, which they do anyway, when you have to rent uh, a suit. Uh, so now the measurements that they gave me is what I'm gonna use to get, you know, new stuff and get rid of, donate the stuff that really don't fit. Like they're too baggy, I don't like them. Um, I barely wanna wear suits now because of the new measurements that I experienced with the suit. Uh, that I wore for for the wedding versus the stuff that I have in the closet now, which really don't fit me properly. So, um, so that's the wardrobe changes needs to happen. But um, but yeah, it was it was good. It was good. Um, I really enjoyed volleyball on the beach because that's my thing. I love volleyball. All right, tell me about this bus though. The bus. Okay, so so I think the bus. Cause so we were near. Um, for those who've never been uh to that spot and in, in mexico it's it's really a, a party tourism area right but uh the the buses that were running in front of most of the hotels is the r1 and the r2 uh, and you have to pay like 12 pesos to be on there uh, which is like one or two dollars us or whatever it is uh, but that that bus to me it seems like most of the buses are independently owned maybe the, i guess that's the vibe that i was getting because the way this this uh, driver decorated his bus, I mean, he had his own like studio jamming DJ session inside the bus. And I'm like, you know, is this like a thing? But the other guys that we took uh, as far as the uh, the other buses that were uh, the same line number didn't have all those fancy stuff to it. So so this guy had like uh, a um, a comic book you know, thing going on. And he had like, you know, Batman signals and stuff like that. And one of the things I really did notice, which I was sharing uh, with with my fam was that if you notice when you do international, most of the individuals who drive, they drive manual cars, right? But when you go into the States, they don't. Because my thing is, I think Americans are lazy when it comes to that. <laughs> um, that's just my personal, you know, thing. Uh, but I noticed that pretty much everybody drove a manual car, whether it was a taxi guy or the buses were manual and, and the other stuff that were taken. So so he was just jamming like he, you know, he he started changing the music and, and he had one guy hanging outside of the the doorway while the 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 bus was moving. And I'm like, this, I guess this is a thing. So so we sat down and we're, we're jamming to some of the EDM that he was playing. And I was like, you know what, let me just record that. And that's what we recorded on uh on instagram and he was just like he was just having a good time and i think that that was good that was good and and i really enjoyed that everybody you know like so the movies paints pictures of of um different countries and territories right and yes i i do understand that that is a tourism area right but at the same time when we ventured out to the like, supermarket uh the perfecto supermarket in that area everybody's just like really humble versus the things that we hear how you know mexican are, are, are portrayed and even when we went away from the main tourism area to um where the supermarket was and just hanging out around there and just uh, seeing the the actual soldiers just you know doing their thing yet yeah, they're protecting to make sure everybody's cool so they they keep coming you know to make money because you know uh, of tourism and stuff like that but just the individuals who are just living their lives minding their own business just humble people humble people and i kind of expected that uh, i kind of expected that because um I, I remember when i used to live in haiti that's the vibes that i got so i was kind of used to seeing individuals just living their lives being you know, humble and, and doing what they got to do, showing a lot of love. Uh, and I don't know if it was a, a thing that is um, native with Mexicans uh, to some degree, but when when they really 
um, appreciate something you, you, you've done for them in the moment, like they put their, their, their hand over their area where their heart is like to show that they really appreciated that gesture that you did, whatever that was, whether that was giving them additional pesos, you know, American dollars uh, or whatever the case, or you, you just showed appreciation for their services or just being kind human being uh, to another kind human being. They appreciate that by, you know, showing love by putting their hand here. So um, I was talking to a buddy of mine while we were out there. I said, do you notice that? And he was, and he was like, what? I said, every time they appreciate something you've done for them, um, you know, the Mexican male or female, whoever it is, uh, they, they show that they really appreciate that, that gesture by, you know, so, so little things like that, I was picking up and just, um, just enjoying like the 80 degrees that, okay. So let's put things into perspective, Daniela, you have the great weather too. Okay. So I okay. don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> talking about, Oh, you know, I'm jealous, you know, but you know, you walk out and you're in paradise. Uh, for individuals who love to be, um, who who love to consider traveling where you are, in Hawaii, okay. So you have that weather pretty much all the time, with the exception of you know the 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 volcano stuff and different things like that, you know mudslides stuff like that. Um, but your weather is just amazing too. So we got to come check you out. We, we, we're trying to plan different trips now. So we have Cuba <laughs> on the list. We got Canada on the list uh, for international, which is just like eight hour border crossover kind of thing. Um, Haiti might be on the list in the near future, depending on, on how we want to plan those trips. But um, definitely, definitely had a, a good time. Good. You needed it. Sorry, family. Yeah, I needed it. <laughs> I needed it. I needed it. Uh, so one thing I was really surprised to see, though, is, uh, you know, you mentioned that you uh, you didn't really dig cowboys as much. No, and I'm still not. <laughs> OK, so why are you playing all this Red Dead, though? I'm trying to understand. Because I'm trying to because I, I am told that the beginning is slow, but it like it builds up and it's great. And you know what? I can't not fair for me to hate on a game that I didn't try yet I didn't give it a chance so here I am trying my best to give it a chance okay. and Red Dead Redemption is so boring to me <laughs> okay because I don't it's just so empty like the story feels so dry to me I I feel like I'm just going through the motions and the the, the, the one thing that is really pushing me and getting me to come back and playing it each time is the fact that I want to I want to fill out my compendium which is like getting the um the like hunting all the animals uh finding all the different herbs um I guess um one second one second word Mm -mm. Excited for episode okay, four hundred seventy-six. Um, You're back. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> so it, it it's just like it's just getting all of all of those those things to fill it out. But the story, like I'm picking up the quest, I'm picking up the bounties, and I'm like, I don't. The story isn't interesting to me yet and okay. it's not it's not building up for me yet and i feel like every, every time somebody keeps telling me it's like it'll get there it will get there and i'm like when does it get there because i think i put in like so far probably 12 to 14 hours so far and I'm like so what would you compare it to like is there anything you would compare it to in terms of replay value excitement level anything no, no. <laughs> nothing <laughs> nothing wow like you made that's, a lot of money just, though it did and people are liking it and they're like oh it's like a cowboy grand theft auto and i'm like um grand theft auto is so much more fun <laughs> okay Fair enough. Like, I'm not seeing it yet. And, like, my amusement comes from, like, the mishaps of stuff that I don't intentionally mean to do just because of, like, the physics that are in the game. You have no idea how many times I've crashed 
my horse in full sprint into a tree by accident because I was reading chat. So you can't like read chat and and write at the same time. You can't do it. No. And then there was this one time I was like very slowly, very casually walking or riding my horse. And like right. there was a low branch and that low branch flew me off with such momentum that my body did a 360 before I fell on the ground. I'm like, how did that happen? We were going so slow. <laughs> wow. And like, that's where I'm getting the amusement out of it. But like the, the story is just not there for me. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to give it, give it, you know, I'm not going to call it quits. You're giving, the, you're giving it giving some it. time. Yes, I am. Some more time. Yes. If so, I hit so the 40 have... hour mark, I'm going to give it 40 hours. Okay. If I hit the 40 hour mark and I still think this game is boring, I'm done. Right. Okay. So do you have like what? Dailies, weeklies, quests, main storyline? Like what's the setup? So I far? have so f I don't even know what I'm doing. That's how un like the how boring I what's think the, the storyline is. Thing? What is the wanted thing? Okay, so that's a, that's the thing that's driving me insane too. So if you are caught doing something that's questionable, like if you accidentally kick or kill somebody's dog or cow that belongs to them, or you're caught murdering or getting into this fight, you'll end up being wanted, and a bounty is put onto your head. So, the, you know, you can be, it's kind of like getting those stars in, you know, Grand Theft Auto, you know, the lawmen will come, they'll investigate and find you, hunt you down, they'll set your dogs after you, get arrested, you pay a fine. But what I'm it's driving me insane is that, so there's these random instances where you'll come across somebody who needs help, or they're, you know, they're getting robbed, or they're being hogtied and taken away and they're calling for help so i stop but i help them and i get into this scuffle with these bad guys right. and then next thing i know i'm getting hunted down and investigated <laughs> for helping this person i'm like how does that make sense why are you hunting me i was helping him out helping right. him and then i'm thinking I'm like dude i just helped you why are you not telling the lawman that I am on the right side. No, you're letting them hunt me down. Okay, okay. And then there, there's this, this one town called Strawberry that I'm like, oh, wow, there's a lot of cool things here. Oh, I'll right. go and check it out. Like, they're, like one of the quests like led me there for whatever reason. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go and check out this. Host, but, uh, you know, I'll do it after I finish off this this quest and I and I do whatever right. it is and it turns out that you're you know one of your buddies is in jail or whatever and um for whatever reason you break him out of jail you get into this like gunfights with the lawmen in this town you help them escape and you know what there's a bounty on your head in this town and I'm like man I should have checked out the town before like I <laughs> continued on this quest because oh now there's a gosh. bounty on my head here and nowhere is safe and i didn't even get to check out what they had in this town <laughs> yeah mm. that's, okay that's where i'm at with this game so ru says i'm from the northeast and i have no interest in combat simulator cowboy simulator said combat cowboy simulator 2 i think it's a western thing um i'm hearing good things and I kind of expected that you were going to feel the way you feel about it because you've expressed, you say you don't like cowboys, but you like pirates. So if this was a pirate game uh, in a pirate setting, I think that would be right in your wheelhouse of things that you really enjoy. Uh, so I'm not completely surprised that you're working through the process of playing this game red dead uh so yeah but i think if i give it a good solid 40 hours of a try i feel like that is a good solid amount of time to give to a game mm -hmm. 
for it to be exciting, for it to be interesting, and for it to change a person's mind about what they think about the genre. I agree. And like I said, I think I'm like 12 or 14 hours in. You know, I got some time. Red Dead's got some time. We'll see how it is. I'm just Do you waiting like for anything that. about it? I like my horse. <laughs> okay. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> I like my horse that I named him Patches, and that's kind of it. <laughs> Patches. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so one of the things that you mentioned earlier, I guess I wanted to to jump back to real quick, is um, not uh, sharing certain thoughts on social because it doesn't capture it well, mm -hmm. um, especially like, you know, short burst of uh, 240 characters or 280, whatever it is goes to show you how much I'm using that lately, um, as well as um, being vocal about, you know, particular things where the context will get diluted, which is why I think this format, you know, the the audio format where you can express yourself, you're not necessarily timed on what you're saying, um, is a great format because you can express exactly uh, what is going on with you as you as it was intended originally, right? To to get that information out, um, which is why, as as we talked in previous conversations, I don't spend that much time on Twitter anymore. Like unless somebody adds me, I don't know what your your uh, philosophy on it right now. Unless somebody adds me uh, specifically or DMs me, I don't see Twitter um, like I used to. Uh, because I feel that anything that I want to share, I'd rather share it here with you and uh, for our community and the individuals who listen to the show will get that information the way we wanted that information to go out. Um, so not saying that um, they're not, I, I got to be careful, not not saying that I can't share my thoughts on on Twitter and social media. I just rather not to at this time. And, and I guess... Yeah, I'll go with that. Um, any thoughts on that? It's interesting yeah. that you said that because there's something that it's not so much what's said online. And it's it's kind of a similar thing, but the opposite. It's what's happening offline. So uh, earlier this week, um, I'm always on social media. I don't think I, I kind of try to censor what I say only because sometimes it might not be politically correct or... You know, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings because we have a difference of opinion on something. I'm always respectful of other people's opinion, but I can't expect that same thing in return. Um, but there was somebody that I don't know how they ended up on my timeline. Either somebody liked their comment or retweeted it or something like that. But he brought up something that I found so, so interesting. It actually resonated so much with me was that he, you know, he went to he went to TwitchCon. Um, he got to meet all these people and they end up like, want, like, you know, being friendly in person and talking and they're like, yeah, we should work together. We should collaborate. Um, we should do all of these things. And so you, you get that impression of like, awesome. This person, you know, wants to, you know, drive, get some work done together and, and do all these things and you guys can help build each other up. But then when he went home, you know, you do your thing, you send out those emails or you follow the person on Twitter like hey it right. was great meeting you at TwitchCon you know what is what kind of ideas can we think up but he found that when he you know he got back to that follow-up conversation back home these people that he met in person that was so nice and friendly to him wouldn't even give him the time of the day or straight up told him you know I'm not really that interested or I saw what you know I saw your numbers and you're not of you know, my level to work with. Okay, and so I, this I, is um, this is independent contractor to independent contractor. This is yeah. uh, Twitch personality, Twitch personality, basically, is what you're saying. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And so I thought that was so interesting because I've gotten that, that impression for some people. And most people, you can tell it straight off the bat when you see them in person that, like, they really aren't that interested in it. In, into you or whatever it is you're how doing. How can you tell? It's just their body language. Is their body language and how you can tell how much attention somebody is paying to you or the conversation that you're having. It, 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 it's kind of like that. It's more of how what their body says rather than what they, they actually say. They, you okay, I have a question for you. What's that? Because I've been listening to a lot of uh, different tw uh, Twitch streaming 
type shows podcasts lately mm -hmm. and 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 i guess i want to hear your thoughts because you've gone um more than once of the vibe of why do people go like um if you're not on a panel okay this is just based on what i'm hearing and i and i need you to like correct me and 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 my perception of it right now if you're not speaking on a panel right um and you're not a vendor right um, and they're celebrating community of all the individuals who stream on the platform, right? I like ideally, like looking at the con, that's what they're celebrating, right? And then at the same time, they do the keynotes, and then they do the panels to allow the individuals who stream on the platform to stream better, right? So you have the keynote with the numbers, which is most most stuff like that. Then you have celebrating the entire community of all the individuals who stream on a platform, Twitch specifically is what I'm talking about. Then and you have the vendors that come in to uh, uh, showcase what they're coming out with or what they already have out. Um, so why do you go? Why do I go? Yeah, like, and, and all that, you know, whether, you know, correct me if I said anything that, that's not true about what I perceive Twitch content to be like. Why are you going now? For me, it's just, it's to see people. It's to see okay. people, it's to hang out. Fair enough. Um, it's also, okay. I feel like if there's certain, I guess, studios or developers, it's just kind of like a different feel as compared to going to, say, E3. E3, I feel is like super business in a way. Okay. Um, th they know why they're going there. Where TwitchCon, I feel it's a little bit more relaxed. It's a little bit more personal in a way. Okay. Good. Yeah, I mean, they had certain things that were, like, based off of appointment only. But for a lot of it was like, yeah, come on by, like, anytime that you can. Like, it wasn't super, like, strict. Like, oh, okay, so your appointment was this time. We have to slide it this way. Oh, we can't fit you in because we're overbooked for this. It, it right. wasn't like that. Um, and I, I like that aspect of it. Um, I didn't go to any of the panels. I was very, like, if I had the time and I wasn't doing anything during that time, yeah, I'd go. Um, there was a couple that I really wanted to just show support for the people I care about. Um, but I also knew that I could watch those panels later on. Right. Um, and it was just, like, the relationships I can put together. On top of that, on top of that, there's a lot of people. I, I don't mind working with with anybody really i don't mind collaborating with it but if you got a great idea and i feel like i'm a fit and you're a fit sure we can work on whatever it is i don't care if you have one follower or you have a million followers it, it doesn't really matter it's the it's what we can create together um at the same time i don't see it as a popularity contest but the personality that somebody puts out like we've discussed this before a pers personality that people put out can be different from what's in person Right. And so the same thing can be said like off screen, like that, that person that they are in reality can also show up, you know, behind the scenes and me being able to meet that person um, right in front of me and see if our personalities really will drive together. Like that's my deciding factor there too. If I want to continue on, like if I feel like there's something that we can't drive, if we can't drive offline, off stream and work together like that because there's a difference in our personalities or our you know our our drives right. then it's not going to show up well on screen and i'll be okay. able, i can i can openly tell somebody that it's like maybe i'm not the right fit for you or or you're not the right fit for me but i can list so many other people that are i need like that's what i find from being able to attend twitchcon Word. Uh, comments in chat. Uh, Ruth says, I think there is an elitism in the Twitch game streamer community more so than other type of content streamers. Agree? Disagree? What do you think? Second. Hi, Dark Louse. Um, hang out on Critical Dark. Shows on What's Twitch. Up, Dark? Because it's a small community. A lot of friendly back and forth. Lots of dual streams. Um, I think there's only some Twitch game streamers. Yeah. There is 100%. I agree to agree with it. Is that it's. I don't know. Like I can semi agree with the word elitism to it, but it's definitely a popularity contest. 
I 100 that's what I call it is just a popularity contest um which is very very high school and I, I really really dislike it um and really the only way that you can change that is just being yourself open to being able to work with people regardless of what their numbers are so mm -hmm. Like the person I am now, like if, if the way to change that, fully change that is that when you get to that part where you are considered popular, um, to be humble and still work with anybody like you were when you right. were not popular. Right. Um, because that's not what it's about. I mean, just because you're popular doesn't. There's a lot of big time streamers that found the popularity based off of not necessarily having talent. But because they can be mm. toxic, I don't think that makes them a good streamer. It just makes them because you're popular because you're a jerk. Um, I'm not going to put any names to that one. You can fill in so many names with that one. Um, and then there are those that create really great quality content um, that deserve that popularity or that name or fame, whatever it is that's attached to their name. I just wish that they didn't only just stick with, you know, those who are on that same tier with them. I feel like when you reach that point and there is somebody within, like, I, I got to meet her recently at, at TwitchCon. She, um, her name's Hugsy and she just made partner the week before TwitchCon. It was such a huge thing for her and she, she deserves it. She was awesome. And I, I, I absolutely love that woman. Um, and she is a great model person. I would say she's like when I was talking to her, she's like, "Yeah, I made it. I made it as a partner. I did. I did. You know, I paid my dues. I earned this. Now it's my turn to, you know, give back and help other people and to get to my level. So she's she's like, I got there. Now I got to help those other people who helped me get here and are below me to bring them up with me. You should always be willing to bring people up with you. That's dope. So." It's, it's just weird and it's like it's such a rare thing for people to do that and and what what drives me insane is you have these these big streamers who are like always talking about imp like positivity and inclusive and all of these other great things but they mm -hmm. will not do something to help you know quality smaller streamers get up there with them like Where's your positivity there? <laughs> it takes time to help people. <laughs> yeah, well, when you get like 10,000 viewers in your channel, pretty sure you had a lot of time for that positivity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. Uh, as I'm as I'm learning now with the changes that uh, we've been making um on on Twitch, uh, me personally, I definitely want to talk to you about that as well. But before we get there, before we get there, okay, um, there's been a lot going on with Astro. Oh, a yeah, lot. there have been. A lot of stuff, okay? Um, so the major announcement for Astro we'll talk about later as it relates to the... Uh, uh, the controller. We'll we'll touch on that a little bit later. Uh, but um, right now, I definitely want to focus on on the A40s, uh, the the X edition A40s that uh, they sent over. Uh, they also sent the A10s, the Zelda edition, which Danielle is going to talk about uh, once she receives that. Uh, so that's going to be a thing. So. I remember, I don't know if I should, okay, I got to be careful if I want to tell this story or not. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're doing this real time. This is live, so I can't edit. No, I, I can't, can't tell the story. Um, but, okay, so. <laughs> no, I can't tell the story. <laughs> I can't, I can't tell the story. So, so, so Astro has shown us a lot of love over the years. It, it's been, it's been fantastic. Uh, whenever they send products, we usually, you know, shout them out and say, hey, Astro sent this. You know, and that kind of a thing. Uh, so this time around, they sent the A40s as well as the A10s, and we're going to talk about that. Um, so I definitely want to spend some time on the A40s, which I believe I've talked about in the past. Uh, this is uh, the the rebranding 
uh, the the branding in celebration of uh, the 10th anniversary of of Astro of the A40s themselves, right? So I'm going to touch on things that you're already uh, familiar with if you've used A40s before. Is that fair? Yep. Listening uh, for those listening and those uh, uh, tuning in uh, live. Okay, so. One of the things I like about the A40s is that I could change the size of where the earphone goes, right? So you undo undo the uh, the what do you call that? The magnetic piece where the mic is held, and then you can switch the direction of uh, where you want the mic. Uh, the branding I really like because it it it, re- it reminds me of the uh, Chicago Bulls '90s team when they did the jersey with the red and black. I don't know why I remember that, but I think I had the jersey at that time. So, um, so that branding really spoke to me when I saw that. And I already had the the TR mix amp, the white and red one. So I'm able to use that with uh, the Astro A40. So let's talk about a couple of things. If you only have the headset, you have a stereo and voice chat. Okay, and the connection type is wired. If you have the Mix Amp Pro, you get Dolby, stereo, voice chat, uh, game voice balancing, uh, digital daisy chain. You get the optical input, which I'm using right now. You get the EQ modes to change out, the uh, software support, the stream output, and it's also wired. One of the things I like about the setup right now is for me to hear Daniela right now, I have the... um, on the microphone that I'm using right now, the aux cable is going from the mic to the mix amp. That's how I'm hearing Daniela, right? And then on the on the mix amp, I have the headset plugged in, and then I have the optical plugged in as well, and of course the USB to power it up. Um, I usually use it in PC mode, which is you hold the button down and it it turns white on the mix amp for me to get the PC mode. Updated the drivers on the mixed amp uh, because I haven't done that in a while. I also did the same thing for the A50s and Astro did send that a while ago, uh, but I've never updated the A50 drivers. So I just did that uh, yesterday. Uh, so overall, the what's included in the box, you get the A4D TR headset, you get the microphone, you get the speaker tags, which for whatever reason, I couldn't remember what that was. You get the PC uh, splitter. You also get the inline mute cable. Uh, and in terms of the ear cups, you can remove them and exchange them out uh, if they go bad, right? Let's see that. Uh, it's really magnetic in there. So you can take that out and change them out. And I think you can also do the same thing for the A40. It's a solid build headset. Um, I made a mistake when I had the white A40s and I gave those up and I kind of regret that. (laughs) (laughs) I really do. Um, But overall, you have the certification for Discord. Um, it's It's a solid build headset. It's... I believe if I was getting into the headset game now and I had a budget of anywhere from 120 to 170 dollars, um, I would say I would consider the A40s. I recommended the A40s to a buddy, a buddy of mine uh, last year, and I haven't heard any complaints from him. So that was a recommendation while I had the white ones that I gave up that I regret giving up. Um, and he's been happy with his A40s. Daniela, I don't know if you have an A40 in your home. Um, if you do, uh, let me let me hear some of that experience. Of course I have the A40s. I've, I've had A40s or a set of A40s seven years now. Word. Seven years. I think this is my... Second set. My first set lasted a really, really long time. My only reason why I ended up having to replace it was because I broke, I dropped it and I broke this band. But it wasn't like the first time I dropped it. It was probably like the 20th time that I seriously badly abused it and it finally broke and I I replaced it. 
But yeah, I mean, I can't really picture myself using any other headset. I know that sounds like really, it's just, it's, it's kind of like that long time friend that you've had. You know, it's just like, it's hard to want to get rid of or replace because you've had it for so long. I've tried other headsets. Yeah, sure. But I always come back to the A40s. I mean, we're very much a household of Astros. Because my son, like, la not last Christmas. I think it was the Christmas before I got him his first set of, um, of A40s as well, too. And he got the white set, though. <laughs> He got the white set. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Daniela. He did, he did. Um, but, I don't know. I'm happy with it. I, I really am. I'm super happy. I didn't get to try out the, the only headsets I haven't gotten to try out from them were the A20s. Those are dope. Those are dope. Yeah, I, I gave those up too. I, I think after a while, uh, <laughs> I think, uh, I'm sorry, I just find things funny. Um, I think after a while, um, I I have to start giving the headsets away because it really gets bad in a good way here. If that makes sense. Because I, I can't wear all these headsets. Oh. I have to start giving them away. But yeah, Dude. at the same time. Huh? No, go ahead. Go ahead, finish. Finish your thoughts. No, I, no, because at the same time, I'm like, okay, but I want them all. So how do I work that out? Like, there's, there's a headset that I, I'll, say, I'll say this. There's headsets that I see coming out in the marketplace and I'm like, I just want them all because I know that they're going to be, they're going to be dope for me to use. So I'll, I'll just say that, but at the same time, you can't, you can't have them all. It's these, these are not Pokemons. All right. To so, answer uh, just... Ruru's question here, I just want to have bones up in my white head without squeezing my ears and making it uncomfortable after 40 minutes. So I, okay. So if you were doing way, Astros, okay. So if you were doing Astros, I would say, um, do what's the what's your budget if you if you do not if you don't care what you're spending i would say and you want wireless i'll say a50 and if you want uh, a wired experience that you can plug into anything and then use it for um uh, pc mac or or switch or anything like that one hundred okay i would say do do the a40s 100 to 200 bucks i would okay. say do the yeah do the a40s i mean uh, because you said uh, uh i don't no, I'm just quoting you, your white head. Um, I wouldn't suggest the A10s. I mean, the A10s are really good headphones and they're affordable, but um, they're not as easily flexible as these. I mean, they're built to be very, very durable and almost indestructible, but they're not as open and flexible as this. And what's comfortable about this one is that, or the A40s in general, is that these are over the ear. So I don't know how big your ears are, but um, they do fit over my ear very, very nicely and very comfortably. I mean, I've done 24 hour streams and I don't have like headaches from pressure. I don't have ear aches from it putting pressure on my ears. So if if that's a huge thing for you, don't don't get the A10s or the A20s. Bluetooth. So you're you're looking for like a lifestyle headset, or you're looking for a, a specifically gearing for your gaming headset. So the wireless hmm. part, um, I don't think the wireless is Bluetooth, is it? Is the A50s Bluetooth? They're not, right? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think I don't think they're Bluetooth. So yeah, we we'd have to research your your case there as it relates to what you're trying to do uh a50 wireless headset plus base station green that's xbox uh pc mac blue that's playstation so that that is 299 so if you're looking for a gaming one that's uh discord certified and you want wireless and you get the optical 
option on it because I think it has the in out. It also has it also has the PC slider or PlayStation Four slider if you get the blue, or I'm sure Xbox slider if you get the green. Um, that would be, you know, I like using that for watching uh, shows and stuff like that because of the Adobe and all that good stuff. But because I'm using the A40s now for for this, whether I'm listening to the audio coming from the PC or the PlayStation or the optical coming from the TV, now I could designate the A50 for the uh, PC if I wanted to. But I don't necessarily have to because I'm so close to everything right now. Um, I have the choice of wanting to use the A50s or the A40s at this time. Uh, but if your budget is one to two hundred, and you're looking for a decent wireless headset that's Bluetooth, we're gonna have to look at your your case. Um, yeah, the A50s yeah. aren't Bluetooth; they just operate wireless on five gigahertz. Um, yeah, not Bluetooth though. Yeah, but uh, be based on the experience that uh, Danielle has had with A40s and and what I've had. Uh, thus far with the previous model that I had and this one being a new uh, uh, color that is celebrating their 10th anniversary of the headset. Um, I love it uh, in terms of the build. It's a, it's a quality build. I would say that if you're looking for a headset that is um, a 3.5 millimeter, you know, activated, if you want to say that, uh, it's a solid headset for, for any anything, whether you're just uh, listening to music with it um, anything that you want to use, I think it's um, it's the well well built thing. So I'd say it's it's a it's an A for me. I want all the Astro things. We can talk about the other Astro things later. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so definitely good stuff there. Uh, and um, yeah, next yeah. thing we have is technology. A couple of things. Go ahead. What happened? <laughs> that was only the preamble. Real stuff yeah, that now. was only that was only the preamble, guys. We're about to wrap up the show. Uh, so, so yeah. All right. So we have uh, technology stuff. Uh, one of the things I did see was Cloudflare's uh, service. The one dot one dot one dot one is available for the mobile devices. Um, I kind of like it and kind of don't at the same time because when I tried to use it for Android, uh, it I was at the gas station. I was trying to access my banking site, and it seems like for whatever reason, at that time, it was not allowing me to do that. And as soon as I took it off, I was able to access my banking site. I don't know if what the situation was. It was the heavy snow day uh, for Long Island, which was uh, what two days ago, and everything melted really quickly. Um, it was really bad, uh, but it melted like the next day. Uh, so I don't know what that was. I'm not blaming it on the service. I need to check it out again and then try without all the heavy weather. I don't know if that played a part in it. Maybe, maybe not, but it wasn't working for me and I needed access to my banking stuff at that time because I was making some transactions so I could get some gas and move some stuff over and I was getting irritated. So uh, the fact that the service is available on the mobile stuff is great because it's a dope service, especially if you use it on your router, a native on your router, the 1.1, dot one dot one i think or the one dot one dot zero dot one i think that's the second one that they have for that dns servers that you can plug in uh to your um router if you decide to do that uh, as well as um if you decide to use something like open dns which is what i've used for a very very long time native on the router so it filters out all the foolishness and nonsense uh, from my network that kind of a thing daniela thoughts on that that's a lot going on I don't, I don't actually use the service. I don't know too much about it. Word. Um, it's nice. If you go to 1.1.1.1, it gives you all the information if you decide to use it for um, a PC client specific, like, you know, client A, let's say your machine, you, you want to run it there, uh, or you can run it native on your entire network if you decide to put that on your router, that kind of a thing. So um, it's, it's pretty neat. Pretty neat service. So that's what's going on with that. Um, okay. So... Tell me about this. So, Tell me about your it, your change so here that happened. I've been thinking. I've been thinking a lot about um, 
do booting windows again right and there's only one game that would make me go through the great lengths of the changes that i had to go through just to pick up this game for free while the time was limited right so windows 7 i had that i had to find it um i needed to do boot elgato a capture device i had that somewhere i tried to sell it like many times and for whatever reason nobody wanted to i guess i could see why because i guess i need to use it again later on but um destiny 2 was free okay yep. and apparently there was like earnings calls and stuff like that people were saying they weren't satisfied with the way that the game was was doing but contextually speaking the game has done uh phenomenally well according to the director so the earnings call conversation was something completely different i guess we're you were talking about uh, a company we're talking about a business that makes money and they're looking for a particular amount when you're not going to get the same um growth when the game first came out with the excitement of something brand new with a second or third iteration of it maybe you will maybe you won't but you had some hiccups and stuff along the way but that's besides the point so um so destiny 2 pc battle.net was free until the 18th today's the 18th i don't know if that was 18th as soon as 12 a.m 18th or or 11 59 uh p.m before the 19th but definitely check if you're listening to this live if destiny 2 is still free on pc if you don't care about the game that's fine that's fine but the thing is the game is good it's free forever and if you decide that hey maybe i want to check this out why not right so i was like you know what i'm going to get the game for pc just in case I decided to play it on a PC. I tried to play it on my laptop. It it was okay. I, I played it at 30 frames. Um, but I do play it at 30 frames right now. But even at 30 frames and making some slight adjustments on the PC uh Destiny 2 Battle.net, I mean that game looks so good. Like, like almost to the point where I was almost trying to make the decision like do i want to grind to 600 with this new kindergarten at 100 on the pc kindergarten i don't know if i want to do that i don't know if i want to do that but it's tempting now because I have the game on the PC platform. So uh, one of the things that 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 happened with that whole thing, I was like, okay, so I have two drives in this in this laptop right now. So I have one running uh, Ubuntu and one running uh, Windows Seven, right? Then I had some somebody say, well, why you want to run Windows Seven at end of life? Well, Windows Seven is all I got, right? Okay, so if you have Windows 10 that you want to throw my way, that's fine. Throw Windows 10 my way, then we can talk about what I want to run at end of life. Okay, so install all the updates and all that good stuff. That's that's here. And then so now it's like, all right, let's boot up the laptop to choose either the Ubuntu drive or the Windows drive. Right. Mm -hmm. I should have a menu for that. So. I load up the thing and there was no menu. It would only go to the windows. So now I'm freaking out. I'm like, okay, I messed up. So I'm trying to figure out how do I get the machine to recognize that there's two OSs on two drives and I need this menu system to pick the stuff. So now I'm, I'm looking, I'm going crazy on the internet. Okay, not mind you, you know, my oil, my, my oil burner went out before I went to Mexico. That's another story, right? But anyway, so, um, so I had to find this software once I finally found it and it, and it worked perfectly, uh, use at your own risk called boot repair and boot repair. I was able to put that on a, a USB drive and it had recommended, um, thing that you just click and it does the thing for you and i was able to get my menu back to see both drives um so i got destiny 2 pc happy that i have it 
It was free. I get to keep it forever on my Battle.net account. Windows 7 is installed. Elgato, I updated the drives on my old Elgato, uh, I think the first unit, the first HD unit, not the 60. And then that works perfectly with Windows 7. Um, yeah, um, and I guess additional thoughts if they come. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll stop. There. Any thoughts on that? No, keep going. Keep going. Okay. All right. So, so I installed the drivers on the Elgato device. Um, I got the HDMI running the way the HDMI is supposed to run. I found the HD cable that I needed, uh, the um, USB cable that I needed to find to plug into the uh, Windows uh, 7 PC. Uh, I got blue screen of death one or two times. Uh, one was a USB code. Um, uh, the other one was for something else. I updated uh, some additional um, updates for Windows 7. Everything seems to be running fine right now. At the time of this recording, uh, I'm using Windows 7 uh, OBS to record the audio locally on my side. Danielle is doing the, the magic with the video production on her side. Uh, I'm using ATR 2100 that has built-in drivers. Uh, I'm using the A40s to listen through the output of the aux cable that's running to uh, the TR mix amp. So, so far, so far, everything seems to be working. Oh, the other thing I did. The Firefox browser was um, was my second choice, and it should have been my first choice because I noticed that the, the memory footprint that uh, Google Chrome has, I guess generally speaking, is kind of crazy. Uh, and I noticed that the footprint that Firefox has is less uh, than a Google Chrome browser. And now the only thing I need to figure out is how to import all my bookmarks from the Google Chrome browser to uh, the Firefox uh, browser. I'm sure it's something really simple, but I haven't figured it out yet. Uh, but right now I'm running everything on Firefox. I disabled uh, the uh, Internet Explorer 11, whatever it was, I disabled that. Um, I still have Google Chrome installed because of, of, of my bookmarks and stuff like that. Um, and there's some other changes that I need to make as well. I installed a, a Windows 7 Tweak uh, EXT. It's very, very small, very lightweight, so I can make adjustments on all the stuff that I want to disable and, and, and enhance as far as the network tweaks and stuff like that for the machine. Um, just so far, so good. Uh, so far, so good. Um, Ruru says that Linux is too much work and Chrome is sucking up 1.5 gigs these days. Chrome, I don't know if it's exactly 1.5 gigs, but I do say that it is very resource intensive as of, I want to like say the last several months that I've actually been paying attention. It's always based off of how many tabs, like the more tabs you have open and instances of Chrome, it's not, the scale to that is not very friendly at all whatsoever. And especially like when, when I'm doing and recording the podcast, having so many tabs open can can eat up. But something that definitely eats up a lot of resources, and I discovered this yesterday, because I never really paid attention to how to problem with it, is Discord. I don't know what it is about their last they've been rolling out these updates one after the the like one after the other. Um Yeah, when you have private private video chats. 33% of my CPU usage, 33 really? to 35%. I was like, absolutely amazed. Like really that much? That's a lot. Like, um, yeah, yesterday we were trying to play, we we're playing like community game nights of uh, Rainbow Six Siege and there were uh, five of us and we we're all in a private uh, video chat together because we wanted to have like all the cams up on there. It was hard. It was really, really hard to do. It was um, especially for the person who was trying to run it. And she has a really nice new PC that she, like, built to the T. It was really nice. Um, well, for me, I have an older 4770K uh, for my friend who was running the stream. And she was um, in the, the chat. She had a 97, I think. Or is it? I forget what the number is. But it is one of the more current... Uh, CPUs and that was like really hindering her being able to play and stream so like there's a huge difference between my CPU and her CPU but granted hers is she just built her computer PC so good um, but and it was still using up a lot 
of her her CPU usage. And then you try to stream on top of that, it's terrible. And I don't think we've mm. had that problem before. So that's definitely something in the Discord's latest updates for sure. Yeah. Um, so I haven't checked the Discord uh, stuff. I'm definitely going to check that to see exactly how much it's running. Um, currently using the uh, C922 uh, for this recording. Uh, usually I use the um, the 4K one, um, which I'm using that when I'm streaming on my channel, right? Uh, so that's what I was saying to you earlier. I need additional USBs because um, I'm running out of USB ports right now especially trying to change scenes and doing all those things, setting up the overlays and making sure OBS is running right, uh, watching a whole bunch of videos just to get what the proper OBS settings should be for me and my machine and this setup here. Uh, so learning curve is just crazy right now. Uh, yeah, and, and, and the oil burner, right? Um, so, so that story is, is interesting because uh, when the guy came back when the guy came in May, he installed the wrong nozzle and the oil burner. And I, I found that out like just before we left for Mexico. And um, so I had to get a new motor and I had to use like insulated gloves to test out this 10,000 volt spark to see if it was active. So without the insulated uh, screwdrivers and the gloves, I could pretty much like electrocute myself, that kind of a thing. Um, but it was it was fun to go through that process and thank you YouTube thank God for YouTube man YouTube saved my life so so that's that. <laughs> Ruru says you don't need an oil burner just run Prime ninety five to eat your room. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 been it's been an interesting last two weeks since you recorded. Um, so I'll say that. So uh, music uh, headphones, music headphones. Um, okay, so before we get to that, uh, boot repair at your own risk. Um, please don't say, well, Uriah told me to use that. And um, I was going off of his recommendation. I will say that it worked perfectly for me. Uh, and I was using it at my own risk to get my menu back. Uh, Gparted is another one. If you're not careful with Gparted, you can wipe your drive. Uh, because Gparted is a great software to wipe drives. So really be careful with that at your own risk, please. Okay, so yeah, um, that's that. Uh, music's uh, headphones reactions. Uh, Danielle, I'll let you start with that. For some crowdfunded headsets, these look super sleek and dope. And hey, Shrub Trub, welcome. Um, What's up? Nah, they they are really 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 nice. So they're the Musix is smart um, noise canceling headphones. Um, they have the hyper hybrid active noise cancellation for immersive sound and experience. Hearing optimization for tailoring sound to your ears only. They have this. Okay, this is what I think is really nice. I really like the the headset charging stand that they have, which is like the magnetic wireless charging stand, which is um, you see that a lot in the wireless Bluetooth headsets the way they just kind of snap in and you know it's a secure solid connection for the charging uh, obviously uses the latest bluetooth of 5.0 for their stable connectivity uh, they also have a smart touch and talk which is like on the cup of the left ear for you to have your conversations and talk and then you also have the auto pause and play uh, which this i think is really cool that it it automatically pauses and when it senses that you took your headphones off, I was like, wow. And you, you, the thing that, that amazes me about this is that the fact that the Indiegogo, this crowdfunding is, their goal was originally only $20,000, which they exceeded yeah. by like, tremendously. Yeah, yeah, like tremendously by five times that. And if it really can like deliver on all of those things, I think really honestly, like you, like you're mentioning Ruru about a Bluetooth thing. If this is for a lifestyle thing, that's something that you want to use regularly, um, just in your daily life. I think maybe that these headphones would be something you can go and check out and consider. Uh, yep. They they right they look in that like range. It, it really is because I think they have um, what is it? Their first one is one forty nine. 
I think it is That's currently right. on on sale before like it comes like officially and out there. Um, yeah, because the estimated delivery is March two thousand and nineteen. So that if you jump on any something that you're considering it, I think one forty nine is definitely a steal for a headset like this. Like I haven't been able to experience myself. That's why I'm saying if it delivers on that, right. That is a great price point to to jump in on it. Um, they look like they're very much over um, over the ear because the uh, the diameter. This, I don't have the sizes. I don't know what the exact measurements of it, but from the images that they have, they look like about the same size as uh, these ear cuffs here. Well, it's uh, you're talking about drivers. It's forty millimeter. Drivers. No, not the well, not necessarily the drivers, but just like the size of the ear cuffs. If it's really over Got the it. ear, true over the ear, and not resting it. on it. So, it's something to consider. And I think they look really, really nice. Yeah, you know what got me though? What is uh, the video they have with the uh, Bose uh, noise cancellation performance test versus the music set to that that got me that video where it showed okay we're going to test out the Bose and this is the noise cancellation and, and it's right on the indiegogo uh page you can watch the video where it shows that this is the Bose and this is ours and within these frequencies we perform you know better than the Bose and i know individuals be like that can't be because Bose are the best right that's great but i think the the video was very straightforward on what frequencies at bose doesn't do well and this headset does that's all i'm saying so watch the video on the page and then you go from there uh so aside from that you know as you mentioned the the noise cancellation stuff uh, they have diagrams and all that stuff they they've done their their due diligence to have all this information to show you how dope it is and um like you said we are hoping that it delivers on everything that it is saying. And for 149, I think that's, uh, you can consider that one. I think it's a really nice introductory price for that. Um, I think after, after that initial launch, which is in March, it, I think it goes up to 249. So get if on your price, yeah, if your price point is between 100 and 200, that's, that's right in there. It's like a nice sweet spot get on it all right uh, any more thoughts on that mm -mm. okay so uh, this uh, particular character in overwatch lucio um i did know that this character was a, a dj of sorts and apparently they have their own album that was released for free i think it's 11 tracks it is dope dope music if you like uh, the edm slash Ridge Racer, the later versions of Ridge Racer type of music. I think that's the vibe that I got from it. Definitely check that out. Uh, it's free. You can download 320 kilobytes per second version of it or 128. And I think there's two wave options, if I remember correctly, when I downloaded it from the website. I uh, started listening to it already. It sounds really dope. I added it to my library and um, hopefully just have some fun with that and, and different um, instances. Uh, Danielle, any thoughts on that? No, but I'm sure they probably sound really nice. His album will sound really nice on that Mu6. <laughs> that would be really dope. <laughs> <laughs> that would be dope. <laughs> Make it happen. Lord bless me. Um, all right. So, um, all right. So I don't know this situation, Danielle. I don't know if you've been following it really closely. So, so yeah. So what's going on with this uh, Street Fighter situation must be like i know okay so i had i had to be educated on top of this so i guess after the investigation about this uh alleged i don't like that word alleged but um abuse of his ex-wife they found out that it was all false or you know it, it didn't happen um i think it was enough to tatter his reputation he has like I think initially he dropped, he personally dropped from any of the tournaments for the rest of the year, but then Capcom just fully, like, just absolutely 100% no, you're not going to be attending. He was dropped from Panda Global. Um, I want to say, like, uh, 
What does it take these days to ruin a reputation? Doesn't take much. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. But there's some people who can make a comeback. And and then and it, it kind of sucks for somebody when, you know, have all these, these things come out. Then they turn out to not be true, but you're still ruined from it. I feel, I feel like if you had the right marketing, the right manager, right publicist, because I feel like, I mean, on some level, these pro gamers and stuff like that have should have some type of publicist, I guess, what it would be. That's what they called, right? The ones that manage your image. They That's should. A, and help. Yeah, they should. But most yeah. of them don't. It seems like the team manager is the one trying to manage the image of, of the players. That's what it looks like to me. I mean, again, perception, right? If mm -hmm. there's If there isn't a person or team uh, dedicated to make sure that the image is what it should be for these players and organizations, then that's not going to happen, especially if they don't even know with all the fame and all the, the super, you know, success that they've had, and they may not necessarily have gotten the maturity to handle that, then who's teaching them that? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know either. So it falls on a team manager. It falls on their parents. If their parents are traveling with them, who does that? It falls on somebody. Um, but at the end of the day, if they don't learn it quick it, or they're not media trained in any way, shape, or form, they're going to suffer for that long term. So, yeah. So that situation was really interesting. But uh, you said you had some other things as it related to the recent event in Atlanta. What's going on with that? <laughs> you know other other competitions that are happening so i think today was a huge like light being shown high res i don't think they know what they're doing period and whatever it is that's happening with their game realm royale that game like they've made so many changes to it that i think their game is just dead and i think they're fighting to bring it back um, but it's just not happening. So at DreamHack Atlanta, they had um, they had a twenty five thousand dollar tournament, which it didn't really actually announce. It was open to the people who are attending there, but like since they didn't officially announce it, like once people found out that it was happening, it was already too late. But there were there were some like pros that were in attendance there that that got on get ugh, got in on it. Um. But the entire tournament was an absolute mess. It was just like quick pop up thing. I don't even think that um, I don't even think they put really much thought into how it was going to be run. Uh, there was like um, there's a few competitive streamers. Um, I believe it was Brian Keffrey St. Pierre. He um, he was there and he was tweeting out about the tournament and there's Photos that are being um, posted up on Twitter from Mendo, um, they all they all compete. Um, but looking at the photos, it's like the stations that they have didn't even look official. It looked like something that you would find out of somebody's like LAN party garage, you know, with friends. The small tables, like the the right. monitors were just like haphazardly up there. The players didn't have room for their keyboards. Um, one of them was like a lot of them had to play with the keyboard on their lap. Which is really hard to do to play with your keyboard on your lap and you have your mouse on your table because you couldn't have two keyboards sitting side by side. Um, their monitors were just like some of the monitors were set for 2K, some were just like 1080, you know, different resolution. So um, it wasn't like a standard throughout all the players. And not only that. So the the issue was that Kefri, uh, he ended up I hope I'm saying his name right. I always butchers people's name wrong. Um he uh he was quickly eliminated in the qualifiers i believe it was and he he realized that so you have his monitor and then you have the big screen in which everybody um everybody can actually watch the tournament and see what's happening 
and it had the map about where the players were at, how many were alive, and they were doing spot things so they can see, like, you know, the player's point of view about whoever it is. But he realized that that big screen that everybody can see was a one-to-one, -one, and there was no delay to it. So when you're playing, and there are some, there are some photos that were posted, when you're playing and you're, if you're competing, you only had to look up just a little bit to see this giant screen above your monitor to see where the other players are at. He didn't want to claim that anybody was, I guess, cheating. Right. But there were some things that were kind of questionable, like how would you know what was in there, you know? Um, right. And he brought it up to the staffing, high-res staffing that was there. That And they just told him that they weren't going to change anything about it. They weren't going to make any adjustments. And the uh, the refs that he saw over there didn't even look like they knew what they were doing. Um, they told him wow. they they told him th uh, something along the lines of like you know if people are focusing on their game they're not gonna have time to go and look up at this giant monitor this giant TV that um is showing where all the players are at or what's happening like that and that oh they'll disqualify. So half of the players that were playing had this full clear shot one to one of like if the players there the other half their back was facing it so there's it's like come on right you all know that if you have that chance to peek that temptation you unless you're a really good solid person you're gonna peek even if it's just a wow. little bit even if it's unintentional it's gonna happen Interesting. But High Reds told Kefri that if he didn't stop tweeting about it, because because he had such a huge following and because people knew him in the chat and following all of what he was saying and tweeting, like they told him, if you don't stop tweeting about this, we're going to disqualify you. And sure enough, he's like, I'm not going to disqualify something that, like, I'm not going to stop talking about something that is wrong about how you're running your tournament and you know what more power to him because he shouldn't have because it shouldn't be allowed that way you want an equal playing field that isn't fair that isn't right that's not how you write especially when you have money on the line twenty five thousand dollars like you don't do that and sure enough he was disqualified him and his teammate were disqualified Jeez. and gone it was it was a, it was a mess wow okay well then, Who's that? Uh, thanks for the follow, average gamer. Appreciate it. Appreciate the love. Uh, fail marketing team says Drew. Um, that's interesting. That that's interesting stuff. I didn't hear anything about it. I know a buddy of mine. She went uh, with uh, her her fam, and um, she was taking pictures and she was having a great time with what she was doing there. Um, that's what's going on with that. Uh, an Arizona couple uh, have been ordered to pay Nintendo a whopping $12.23 million in damages for running a pair of sites which offered pirated ROMs. Uh, I think we briefly touched on that a while ago. Uh, any thoughts on that? What do you do with your life when you owe $12.23 million? I don't know. You show like, some leg. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know what you do i don't oh man that that hurts yeah we did bring this up i think it was a few months ago that the i can't remember the name of the site but uh yeah they had to it would be fine for every instance right it's that crazy that hurts that's i don't know yeah i don't know Let about see. that i'm trying to see if we can find the uh husband and wife team and the, the site names because um, at the same time i feel there there's certain people that yeah sure uh they have really discussing alternative motives to being able to you know rip off current games but at the same time mm. if it's for older games i don't know Listen. i feel like to me to me for older games that's almost a gray area for me I don't know. I don't know if it should be a bit it's, steep. It's it's a lot. Loverums.com and loveretro.co. Those are the websites. That, but uh, I feel like they are going to definitely be made an example of. 
which yeah it hurts because yeah there's a lot of sites there, there weren't it wasn't just them who had sites like that there's a lot of sites that offer game downloads and emulators of the sort they're definitely going to be that example like don't rip off our games this could be you mm. so i can see a lot of them um shutting down real quick or finding some other means i don't know in the dark web somewhere right i got a question for you though what's that because you've been a gears fan for a while mm -hmm. it's a great game it's a great game great series i think somewhere around gears judgment i was like what am i doing <laughs> i don't know we don't talk about judgment why, why <laughs> don't you talk about judgment a terrible game it was it was a very i think gears 4 i never played did you play that yeah okay all right so so the recent news i saw was um well from what i understood uh cliffy b had that game that was like the unreal tournament type game the last game that came out and then, if I remember correctly, they did like a a BMX Royale type of situation. <laughs> I think there was a bike in there somewhere yeah, with their Royale game. Okay, all right. I so, can't so I'm not, I'm I'm not going to remember crazy. the exact name of their game. <laughs> I'm not going crazy. Okay. And then a recent tweet that was apparently deleted, according to what I've seen, uh, is that uh, he has confirmed Cliffy B that he will never make another game. All right? How do you feel about that? Okay with it? You okay with that? I mean, what? Okay. Cliffy B has made amazing games. He's an incredibly yeah. bright, creative man. I don't know yeah. if I'd be sad if he never made another game because you know what? Since since I can't remember the name of that game, why can't I remember the name of that damn Pad Royale? <laughs> or the BMX Royale game? Yeah, I, can't, I, I don't know what I, I don't can't know what remember they, the name what of the game it is. Was. But that game and uh, Lawbreakers, and no, it's not Lawbreakers. It's the one. It's the Battle Royale game that he tried to quickly come up with to make right. up for the loss of money that he made with lawbreakers not lawbreakers though um maybe he reached his peak already i feel like the other games because so after after boss key studio radical shut down, heights there you go it? radical heights that's the one okay um after after they shut down um like, I feel the ideas that he, he posted about, because he tweeted out everything, all the ideas that he presented to other studios to have them be made, um, to try to save them. I feel like those would have been better better investments because they looked amazing. They looked so much better than Lawbreakers and Radical Heights. And I felt like, man, if you could have brought those games into fruition and made those games happen... You'd be so much better off because I think he had some great ideas there. And I think he just put his time and effort into two titles that Sally cost him and his employees and his studios a lot. Um, a lot. But maybe at the same time, he's, he's reached his peak. Maybe it's time and he's better suited for being a consultant. Maybe I... I I don't feel that I would be more heartbreaking if Hideo Kojima said he will never make another game. Okay. Like I cannot I cannot picture my my gaming world to lack Hideo's creativity and idea. But I can I can do without Cliff Bazinski. Okay. I don't feel like I'm missing out at the same time. I don't feel, I feel like I love the gear series. I do, but they're also okay without him. Hmm. 
I I appreciate what he's done, right? Thus far. I believe that he still still contribute in some way, shape, or form to projects. I think never is a long time. That that's really my thing. When I saw that, I was just like, the gears guy? Never? So uh, that that was my thing with it. Uh, FPS fans on PC and Xbox doesn't want to give him money. His public image is just terrible, chat says. I guess he's always been so full of himself, but I never really judged him based off of that. It's just more of like, well, you added value and you didn't add value at the same time. And right. I don't know what you've done the last four years that I'd right. be impressed or I'd notice that you're not making any more games. Right. I, I guess in his defense, well, it was a while ago when I met him, I thought he was a cool guy. That's all I have there. In person, I'm sure he's a great guy. It's just the photos that he posts. Just a little bit full of himself. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. But, and that depends on that too. I mean, if you if you worked really hard and you got yourself somewhere and you have all of these great toys and things that you can buy yourself with this fame that you got, yeah, you're going to want to show it off. Word. The George Lucas of video games did some good things, but maybe better to leave it to some other folks now. Mm. I wouldn't call him the George Lucas of video games. He That's Hideo thing, Kojima, though. okay? That's Hideo he, Kojima. He is the George Lucas. <laughs> he did his thing. He did his thing. Uh, but one thing I definitely want to say while recording episode 476 of the show, definitely check out the show radio.info forward slash listen uh, to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, also, later on, before we get out of here, we're definitely going to say what we're thankful for because this is Thanksgiving week for those who celebrate it. Uh, so definitely want to mention some of those things as well as uh, ask us anything uh, before we leave. I think that's a new segment that seems uh, to be uh, exciting because we have no idea what you're going to ask. And uh, we're, we're somewhat excited about that at the same time. So if you do have questions that you're thinking about that you wanted to ask, if you don't do it uh, here while we're live, you can definitely do that in our Discord, uh, the show info for slash Discord. Uh, check us out there. Um, so yeah, the uh, the Metal Gear guy, uh, the legend, uh, Hideo. Um, amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, I'm even thinking about, if I can, using the capture card, uh, the Elgato, to plug the PlayStation back in to go through some of the Metal Gear stuff, which just to look at it, not even to really play the game, just to roam and see the awesomeness that is metal gear maybe one more time that requires me to plug in the playstation 3 I, I gotta dig for that um george lucas is worth six billion i don't Sheesh. know if that's fact but i would believe it at the same time like that's i insane. would believe that number <laughs> that's insane emotes Daniela. emotes uh rapper two milli wants to pursue legal action against Fortnite developer publisher Epic Games over the inclusion of the swipe it emote. Daniela, you've played this game way more than I have. What's going on with that? Yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna find it so funny if a whole bunch of rappers go after this because I mean Can you can you caperate your dance moves? I don't know. I feel like you can because if somebody copyrighted, yeah, I mean, why not? Why not? He copyrighted somebody copyrighted "Happy Birthday" song. The Carlton, so, you know what? The Carlton copyright the the dance, the Carlton dance. I don't, I don't think, think so. They did. Did, he? did they put that in? In a did they put that in yeah. an emote? That was the first emote I bought. <laughs> really, the Carlton? Yeah, it was. They have that seriously? Yes. That's insane. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. First emote that I bought. Is... Um, okay. Yeah, I, I cannot. That was like my favorite emote. 
Um, so do you think they're going to um, give them money for that? I don't know if they would. Um, I don't know if they would give them money for it, but I think it's a good thing to put some light on and to, to show because they, they deserve something for it. I think it would also... make developers and publishers a little bit more aware. To be honest, okay. I don't know if he would actually he'd actually win it. I think maybe they'll probably come to some settlement where mm -hmm. they'll be like, you know what, here's like dollars to pay you for your woes. <laughs> right. Just so that it doesn't continue on because I don't know. It's like I don't Dance know move. <laughs> I don't but know I think he was the he was the first one that complained about it, right? That started all this issue. From what I recall seeing, yeah. So that made news. It's something to follow along with. Um, chat says copyright laws doesn't apply to dance moves, but you can copyright dance routines. Hmm. Hmm. But he didn't initially, what? did he? Michael Jackson thriller. I don't know. <laughs> it's a very interesting one. All right, but um, so I, I don't know what to do with that one. I think that's the second time I, I've seen this mentioned uh, prior to the last, what, week and a half or so? Because it was mentioned in tweets and conversations prior to this and stuff like that, but it's interesting. Um, Destiny two we kind of talked about earlier which i won't spend a lot of time talking about destiny uh here per se but i do want to say that uh the triple xp what they call it valor uh, is going on this weekend right now it's gonna end probably by monday hopefully it's not 12 a.m my time it ends because i wanted to get some triple valor in today uh, one of the things that they did announce in the uh recent update for destiny is that they're going to buff gambit by the ability for people who are lagging behind to actually catch up and win uh the overturning of those matches are going to be buffed uh so they go into a whole conversation about that on the post and um playstation sold over 86.1 million units any comments on those things i'm so jelly that i'm still seeing people who have um are just receiving or getting or bought off the that limited edition the <laughs> numbered one the fifty thousand numbered whatever it is i just saw somebody post about it on boxers and i'm like man that thing looks so nice <laughs> <laughs> oh man that is a thing 86.1 million free overwatch from november 20th to 26th what yeah free overwatch but it's free probably overwatch. like a free, free 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 to play for the weekend kind of like how steam has oh, like there's a free weekend okay. i don't think it's free to keep it's just free to play for a bit yeah because that game is still making bank free overwatch is it if it's free i'll pick it up on pc i would hate it if it was free to play forever <laughs> Mm, interesting interesting things going on with that all right so destiny 2 playstation 86.1 million uh playstation will not be at e3 but microsoft and nintendo will daniela that was really actually shocking to me so i was a little bit shocked when they canceled their playstation experience right so i thought all right Cool. Maybe they're just setting up for some really big thing and showcase at E3. And now the fact that they canceled and will not be at E3. This is like what? The first time in 24 oh, wow. years that yeah. they're just not going to be there. Right. And I'm like, what's happening over there, Sony? What, are, but, what like, would they show if they showed up at E3 this year? PlayStation 5? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. PlayStation 5, that. Resident Evil. No, no. Not Resident Evil. Um, Final Fantasy 7. 
I, yeah. I don't know. Okay. And that's and that's the situation, right? And that's that's just really the situation right now. What is it after the experience that they show with a different axe? On okay, that the, was uh, weird. That was weird. Okay. Right after that, what do they have that we're really hyped about, with the exception of um, Hideo's game? But okay, so they, for me, what do it's they have? not. Right. For me, it's not what they have that I'm hyped for. I'm I'm hyped for the things I don't know about. That's fine. Well, you know about some stuff related to PlayStation and not so much things related to PlayStation, but they still have to bring it uh, to hype level. You think right? you're taking a year off? I think we'll a year off is always great. Call of Duty did it for the three studio thing that they did when Call of Duty wasn't performing where it was supposed to be. Like studios are taking turns. That's Why is this different? It's an interesting statement from Ruru. We will probably get a release date announcement for Death Stranding at Video Game Awards next month. That's that'd be very interesting or, or if they something. did that. But yeah, I don't, or something. I I don't know. I just I I thought that was super shocking to me. I guess if they come back, then it, like when are we gonna hear something from PlayStation again? Would that like will they have the PlayStation experience in two thousand and nineteen, or do we I have to wait to E three twenty twenty? I would say that you're probably looking at, according to announcement stuff, you're looking at a year out. So there's whatever skipping happening in twenty nineteen to regroup for product readjustments, realignments. PlayStation that, 5. That makes, that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. You hold out for the next big thing. And the next big thing, as you said, is not PSVR. It's just not. I mean, that's dope, you know, but it's, what did it sell? Two point something million? Two, barely three million? Something like that. For the, something like that, right? For the PlayStation VR. So it's not that. So you're taking... So so what's happening now is a lot of the company, whether it's the Sonys or whatever company that you want to name, they're using platforms to make announcements. And that's making it easier to get their message out. Because if you notice, Sean Layden has been making a lot of the announcements on the podcast. It's, and how, what is what is that costing them? I don't know how much it costs to, to run uh, the pod. But what is that really costing them to make that announcement where everybody is going to get to hear it and then all the news outlets are going to um, share it? What were you going to say? It's, I don't know. I ne This next coming year, I feel like there is, even though without their announcement, even though they're going to be missing, there's still some pretty big things that are kind of happening, not more so adding to the PlayStation family as it is taken away because I think it's March. March that they're ending support for the Vita. They're ending production or whatever of the Vita. They're ending right. the PlayStation Plus support for Vita and PS3. They're they're removing more than they're actually putting back to replace it. To, and right. what I mean by replacing it, I'm not meaning like new hardware or anything like that. But like when you take away parts of income right what do you have to replace that income with you may not necessarily want to replace it you may just want to streamline your product line overall and i mean it's the thing is i don't think it's any different because we're so passionate about you know the industry and the products that we are enjoying in this particular industry not you or me per se according to the conversation that we're having right now but i think sometimes we get lost in the sauce if you will as as far as that these are businesses that are making adjustments uh to focus on particular products that are doing better than others right and i think that because we love playstation because we love the brands and and the individuals that are associated with some of the biggest things that we play or uh, enjoy 
you know, as far as the tech is concerned, we forget that these are businesses. So when they say stuff like earning calls and 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 fiscal years and anything that that relates to business and marketing and and all those things, we're like, well, we don't want that. We just want the games? Well, they're businesses. <laughs> Some people just get forget that. I don't know why, but you got to do what you got to do. The phones, I don't think, are doing well for PlayStation. The Sony phones. I don't know what they're doing with that. Like, there's a lot of things that they're making adjustments to. Um, and like just a, a rule, I think, mentioned the thing about Mexico City when Microsoft just did the thing there. I think it was Microsoft, right? I just did that Mexico thing. Yeah. Yeah. The XR, I, I, I can't remember how they, um, the abbreviation for, for that thing is at this time, but changes are being made to maximize the dollars that you're um, keeping and putting out. And sometimes the best way to get the message out is on an MP3 file that's not going to cost you barely anything. And everybody gets to hear it. That's just how I look at it, though. No, no, I get it. Sad about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad because we love it. We, we've, we've invested many years into this thing that we love. And at the same time, this thing that we love has, has brought finance in to our pockets, right? Through the outlets that we've used to uh, share the things that we love. You know, whether through that, you know, affiliate programs or the different things that we've we've had, you know, our hands on that that has benefited us in some way, shape, or form, or people donating to the cause that we believe in as it relates to the games that we're playing. Right. So everybody has benefited in some way, shape, or form, even if it's just sending us stuff to to talk about and we're not paying a dime for these things. And we're not. Most of the stuff we're not at all. They're just sending them. And they're paying shipping for that. And we're getting them and we're talking about it because we love it. And all that because of the platform that we have uh, to talk about those things. So everybody is getting a benefit in some way, shape, or form. And if you, you say you're not getting a benefit, you're lying. That's it. You just straight out that call you're lying. <laughs> you're lying. You're lying. You're lying. Because everybody is benefiting. In some way, shape, or form. Now, when the companies decide to, like, even when we're talking about the Cliff, Cliffy B stuff, you know, shutting down to pivot into other directions, um, it's sad because we've seen the 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 history of right his his work and the masterpieces that he's created that we've enjoyed over the years, right? Because mm -hmm. even back in, if, if I remember correctly, Gears was like an a suspense thriller, right? First Gears. To me, I don't know what it became after that. It wasn't a suspense thriller. I was scared playing the first Gears. Really? Dude, it was a suspense thriller for me. It was like a, almost like a horror type flick. It changed though. It changed into something else. Yeah, definitely a bro shooter. I agree. But to me, the first one was dark. It and they was. went away from that. It went, to me, they went away from that. But yeah, that, that's what's going on with all that. Uh, digital only. I think that's where we are, right? Digital only Xbox uh, for 2019. I think that's interesting. Um, another uh, thing that they're adding to their lineup, right? If they decide to do that. And the price entry for that is the same thing that I saw Astro do with the A10s and A20s. And the 30 was already there. The 38 was there, but the 38 got away. The 40 is still here and the 50 is still here. So you added products in your line to meet uh, a price point that you didn't have, that you need to have. Uh, thoughts on that? As long as it's an optional thing. As long as okay. it's like a different tier, if they have a model that allows for also physical copies as well. Okay. All right, cool. Digital only. Yeah. I don't think I'm really cool with that. 
Only because, like, yeah, it's it's great for those who, um, you know, they want a cheaper model. But, um, yeah, yeah, okay. So, like, Rue says, like, the internet isn't ready for that. At least, like, not everybody has great download speeds. They're they're gonna suffer for you. Like, yeah, you save, you you save like half the price of your normal Xbox One system with the digital or physical copy and the the, the disc um, inserts. But if you if you live in one of those those areas in which your internet struggles, you have data caps, you have all of these issues to to worry about. I don't think that's gonna be out. Word. But I mean, if they're gonna do away with with manufacturing the normal systems that we have out now, and just only focus on digital only going forward, yeah. I can't support that. I can't I can't get behind that whatsoever. You like collectibles. Yeah, I do. Of course I do. I, know I like you, having I know physical copies. I know you do. There's a joke in there somewhere, but... <laughs> yeah, I don't have it. room for it either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I, I like the fact that I can download this stuff um, and I don't have to worry about the disc. I really enjoyed... Well, I don't know if that's it's the same comparison. Like putting an image on a USB, I've loved that because I didn't necessarily need to have the um, that's the ISO image on the USB. I get it, uh, but I, I really started embracing the fact that I didn't necessarily need a a picture um, with the box and and the stuff like that. Even though I kept. Uh, some of the um, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 stuff. So it, it's a it's a toss up for me. But even now, like when they were sending you know certain titles uh, to us, they were all digital, and I was okay with that. Most of them were digital, I'll say. Yeah, they most of them are. Um, the thing Dark Lau says the thing is the physical copy doesn't really have the game on it anymore. It's just activation for your account, giving you access to downloading the game for PS4 and Xbox One at least. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that with the digital. Uh, the only thing for me now is trying to decide how big of a SSD that I want outside of the unit to run the games so the loading times are cut down significantly right outside of that i'm all right with that like we did the upgrade for the um the playstation here i think i put a, a two terabyte in there but it was a spinning drive two terabyte so i was like all right uh, a buddy of mine sent me the ssd so i'm running the ssd on the one or two games that i play with on a regular basis and I'm all right with that right now. Kind of weird how my Xbox is suddenly turns on by itself. Like, oh, you're talking about me. <laughs> um. <laughs> that's, that's what's going on right there. Right there. So uh, price point adding to the lineup to capture an audience that really don't care about disc per se. Um, can technically do well i believe it, it will because uh we I, I am not seeing the obligatory instagram post of somebody taking a picture of a game case unless it's a collectible like a legendary super duper collectible unit right that's like 150 plus. I'm not seeing those, hey, this company just sent me a game IG picture anymore. I'm just seeing people doing a screenshot of whatever game that they're downloading that the company just sent to them for review or a collectible of, you know, massive, you know, just Mass Effect as an example, collectible edition or, you know, Call of Duty, super, super care package edition. So I see pictures of those things um, more so than I do the uh, the plastic cases or the steel cases, well, steel, steel book cases. And stuff. I also think that's just more cost effective. I mean, yeah, people are getting the huge limited edition collector's item, blah, blah, blahs and getting those. But there's less of those that they're sending out. 
and more of the standard digital copy. Like you're, it's just not cost effective to send every news and media outlet and mail out. I don't know how many hundreds of code or not codes, but hundreds of discs for those reviews when they're like, here's a code. Right. I'm still, I'm, I'm absolutely sure that it's probably just cheaper to send out those select few people who get the collector's edition compared to, I don't know how many codes that they get. I got yeah. a code. I got a code right now that I got to go <laughs> download from my PlayStation. Do for it. Review. I do. Do, I do. it. I yeah, it's, it's all good. It's all good. So that's what's going on with that uh, stuff. Um, yeah, we talked about the A10s, which uh, Daniela is going to uh, look at at a later date. So definitely thank you, Astro, for that. Um, and last but not least, I think we're there, right? Last but not least. Yep. Last but not least, Daniela, you take this first. Cause this, I take this one? Yes. This shocked me. I, I got shock waves in my system when I saw this one. You can, you can definitely start on this one. So Astro is coming out. So they, we all know Astros for their headsets, but we do not know them. But soon we will know them. For their controller. Jesus. It's the same way. So they're coming out with the C40TR. You know, one of these days, I feel like I want to ask them what these letters stand for. Controller 40? Is it is that it? So what about A40s? What does the A stand for? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but you know what I, mean? um, <laughs> yeah, I should really ask them. But they're already called Astro A40s. So if True. the A stands for Astro, then the C stands for control <laughs> audio <laughs> oh maybe that's right so Ruru and dark glass audio audio 40 mm. man that's interesting a little bit boring <laughs> okay you took away the the mystery of it all i will just Don't i want to just go back to this, like what does a sound for but anyways they came out with the c40s uh these things this is pretty sick so i got i gotta mess around with it a little bit i gotta play with it for a little bit and ah. you know it's gonna be my new favorite controller one day oh my gosh this thing really really is gonna be my new so they they spent I don't know how many long but I I'm sure they spent a lot of time in in development of this they had a lot of consideration um, into into putting this controller and making this controller happen it's uh, it's currently only available for PS4 and uh, PC but I I'm sure possibly in, in the future I cannot see them not uh, um, you know catering to the the Xbox. Uh, you know, players, I mean, it doesn't make any sense for them. So what makes this one so much special? Which, what is it going to, what it does it offer compared to what's out there already? So the, just to start off with, that front faceplate of this controller is actually, you can come apart and you can actually change the configuration of the joysticks. You either can have the parallel joysticks or the offset joysticks, depending on how you like to play, whether it's a PlayStation layout or the Xbox layout. And, and it feels good. Even the directional pad, you can change it from the D-pad into, um, I believe, I, I don't remember what the exact name the is. The directional, the circular, thing. yeah, the circular pad. Um, it's definitely very uh, advantageous for those who play a lot of fighter games. If you don't use a fight stick and you use, um, you use a controller for that, that is a huge thing for you to be able to, to go out and change. On top of that, uh, much like their their A40, A50 headsets, um, it does have its own uh, software GUI for you to configure all of your buttons. Not only just like kind of change the bindings of what's happening to it, but you also have the ability to change the sensitivity and the travel and the dead space um, on your joysticks within that software. And it's saved onto the profile of your controller. Crazy. It, it really it super is and it has two different profiles that you can actually change on the controller itself so if you play a lot of shooters and say you have one profile that's set for you like if you cater to ars and smgs um but if you happen to pick up a sniper rifle you can actually switch your profile on the fly 
to those settings and the sensitivity that you would normally actually play right there without without having to go back into you know your settings or anything like that um there are trigger stops to um the trigger stops here here's the interest this is what i thought was really cool so there's a, a little um tab so you can either adjust your where your trigger stops and ends but on top of that you can also adjust that sensitivity and where it's like where it actually activates within the software itself too oh my gosh man <laughs> There's also um, a couple buttons on the back side of it if you want to program that to have its own motion, however way your play style is. And just the feel of it, I think this is what's great. I don't have the biggest hands, but um, and I generally do like the size and the shape of the PlayStation controller. But this one, it is a bigger controller for those that have bigger hands, but it's not like the original Xbox huge S do controller that it was just abnormally huge but it's a nice balance in between that it just feels really natural in your hands bigger yeah, than this it, it's it's a little bit bigger than that but okay um it does it just feels like it just molds into your hands so so well okay um i think right now um i saw a lot of people when this was announced they were complaining about the price tag which we brought up is two hundred dollars um <laughs> that is that is a very steep price tag but i believe that the core audience that they are going towards is definitely for those competitive type this is why it says it's tournament ready if you right. are actively in tournaments you're actively practicing you will notice that you will like a lot of these competitive players will go through a controller every two to three months you don't believe that but like it really does happen they have to deal with like the drift in their in their joysticks um triggers um end up just like going dead there's always a lot of problems so if you're spending 60 to 70 80 dollars every three months because your joystick has like this drift and you can't correct it because, you know, what well, you can't really send it in for repairs or it's just not cost effective for you to send in repairs. You can't really do it yourself. That $200 makes sense because you can actually, like their headsets, buy mod kits to replace those joysticks, that D-pad. And it is, it's, it's more cost effective to be able, like the fact that you can take off that front face place to do any cleaning in there, change those joysticks. It just makes sense. I mean, it, it, it's, it's catered towards those players. I wouldn't say if you are average Joe who just plays Red Dead Redemption, <laughs> um, you know, it's it's not gonna this this isn't for you unless you're just the type of person who likes to have the newest, coolest thing that's out there. Um mm. on top of that, the, the input for the the charge cable. Um, I don't know if you can notice it, but inside the video that they have for it, it's seated into the controller. Um, this is actually a huge, huge benefit. For those who, um, you know, they end up, you know, standing up in frustration or excitement, you'll notice that if you're charging your um, dark glass, that's for me, all I play is Spyro. <laughs> um, you'll notice that a lot of the weight from when you charge, I'll bring up my PlayStation controller right now since it's like a lot of the weight is right there on, on the connector itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they purposely have it seated into there so that the weight isn't on the connector here, the contact ports. It's actually on this part here. So you're not going to have any breakage from your contact parts. You're not going to have any breakage from your actual um, charge port on your controller because all of the stress is on the, the deep seated part and on top of the outer part, the thickest part of the cable. Which I actually have that just I don't I'm not even a computer player. I have that problem with um, my both my PlayStation and my Xbox controllers where eventually that contact right there because of the weight because of having to repeatedly either I drop it, bends, it right? or yeah, it bends. It has an issue there. So they have that in mind as well, too. 
Nice. But I think I think it's definitely a huge game changer um, <laughs> to the market, to the competitive players. Um, I like I said, I really hope they learn to cater to or are able to cater to. I don't think they're learning to, but I think um, they'll be able to open up the market to Xbox players. Hopefully. Um, let's see what else. What else did I uh, I learned from all of this? It just it just feels nice. But when I raised for the controller at my TV, which we were likely to break, <laughs> um, I would say the TV. <laughs> Wow. I would. It does it does come with um a nice carrying case. It was nice and sturdy. I believe um it's the same type of material and build as their headset case has. Um it comes with a tool to take off their front plate. Um I think I think that's it. I think that's the majority of like what I learned and I took away from it. It was it was great to play with. It was a lot of fun. Well, uh, I have nothing there except I'm drooling, and you did a fantastic job talking about the C40. And um, yeah, I saw the video and I was drooling. That's all I got. There is, uh, there is, okay, there is one thing. So um, there is a switch on there that actually can change it from the wired to the wireless. Oh, man. And they have, no. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like everything on there is like a little simple switch. That happens instantaneously. It's like just all done on the fly there. With the onboard mode switch, quickly change between wired and 2.4 gig wireless mode to adapt to any gaming environment. Game, sound, and voice chat are available using the 3.5 millimeter jack in both modes. Man. Oh, speaking of which. Okay, so for PlayStation side of it, the PlayStation, when you're hooking it up to there, you know how there's some games in which the audio comes through your controller? Yes. But you can't necessarily turn it off from your PlayStation. It's kind of always just there. Yeah. yeah. The option is there inside the that control window GUI to just turn off all that sound. You also have a way for when it comes to party chat of prioritizing um, audio. Change, changing the game over here. They are, they are, and you know, change like that competition brews creativity. So, you know, if you know Astro's coming out here, they're stepping up the game. That just means that everybody else who's in the controller market, they got to step up their game too, and you know, match it. It's does great it feel like to be a cheap consumer. plastic or robust? How does it really feel? Really robust. It's, it's, it doesn't feel like cheap plastic whatsoever. Um, nice. The material, I can't explain. If you have the the texture, the like softness, and durability, matte, it is a matte. It's it's a matte finish. It's it's very similar to all other products. About the if you have the mix amp for the A40s, so the the A40s, the mix amp has a glossy finish top, but that bottom portion is a very nice thick, like velvety matte material. Yeah that that's what it is hold it's... on let me let me let me touch my sounds really weird <laughs> but it's it's definitely that's very intense. durable it's very durable it's very soft um my only concern with that one okay <laughs> let me touch my mix up real quick um my only concern with that is um <laughs> It, it is durable. I don't think it's going to break. I don't think it's anything that's going to like fall in your hands. Is the longevity of that material, of how well it does okay. with people who get really clammy, sweaty hands. Okay. So I, that's, if I had to say that there's a concern for me, it would be that. Is that how does that, that soft texture, that coating that they put over it last and is how durable it would be for those. Cause like yeah, cool. this feels great. This feels great. But how does it handle if you just suffer from sweaty, clammy hands? Well, Uncle you can powder. use like yeah, you can use like a some kind of like antiperspirant yeah, lotion I think or something. They they have something. They have I think it's called Gamer Goo. Yeah, I got the Amazon one actually too. Because <laughs> I was running out of Gamer Goo. 
So I was like, you know what, Amazon, I know you have a product that's going to do the same thing. And they do. And I picked it up. But I loved it. I, I can't wait to have it back in my hands again. Yeah, I need that in my life. All the things. Word. That's my experience with it. That sounds amazing. That sounds really amazing. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk about that, Daniela. Okay, so this is the part where we're beginning to close out the show, people in the chats. Uh, this is the part where you can participate even more. So ask AMAs. us any questions that you have. Word. What do you want to know about the show, uh, what we're up to, that kind of thing? This is the time. This is your moment. This is the segment that we added for that. Uh, and if you don't have any questions, feel free to just hit up the Discord, the showradio.info for slash Discord. I will send you an invite in there, and you can hang out with us, and you know when we go live, whether I go, Daniela goes live, or uh, the show goes live. We That announces... Uh, in the discord as well uh so that's it uh that's where we're at right now in the show and then we're gonna giving stuff and then we will begin wrapping up and that is where we are so word do you then, follow pc gaming news um yes yes we do um but really i think a lot of our topics are catered to like immediate interest because there's like there's obviously so much more uh, news and and updates and everything that happens. I mean, even this past weekend, you had Fa Fantasy XIV's um, Fan Fest, and they announced a lot of different things there. Um, but if we talked about every single piece of news that happened, even if even it's just for the week, um, we'd be here for a really, really, really long time. Absolutely. Because I think we had possibly like what, maybe, maybe less than 30 topics to talk about and we still had a two and a half hour show yeah and that's that's geared specifically because of uh, things that we're passionate about and things that i believe that uh, we're gonna spend uh time talking about and that's going to benefit us to learn from each other as well as um you in the chat and those listening on the podcast as well so um i purposefully pick certain topics uh for for the show obviously intentional um pc news although there are certain things that caught our eye you know as far as the battle net stuff right uh with destiny specifically that made me come back to windows in a sense of installing windows 7 for me to access certain things which made my stream even a little bit better in terms of its presentation and stuff like that so it would have to be something that we can uh speak to freely and it doesn't seem like we're pushing a topic because it's um fluff because we don't have anything to talk about um we did not talk about the final fantasy 15 director leaving the company and everything that's happening over there there's a lot of changes um for me, I know of it, but I haven't really looked deep into the news and what that means overall. I know that there was some DLC content that was canceled. But as much as a Final Fantasy fan that I am, um, I didn't have enough to add actually any valuable input on it. Sadly. I, I don't even think I've gotten past... I don't even know where I'm at in Final Fantasy XV. Hmm. I think I have like three hours into the game. I li I liked it. I don't, I don't have anything problem with it. It's just I have so many games. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot going on there. Yeah. Uh, any other questions, guys, from the chats? Um, still working through Daredevil, that kind of thing. Movie trailers of last week, Pokemon, and Toy Story Four opinions. Uh, Daniela. <laughs> Pika 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am actually really like kind of hyped for the uh, Detective Pikachu <laughs> um, it does look a little bit weird um, I think it, it could have done like been done way worse 
you know, um, these film adaptations, especially for fictional animals, can be done very, very weirdly. And this trailer, you know what, I'm looking forward to it. But there are certain things that weird me out, like... Like Jigglypuff. Why is he so furry? <laughs> I don't know what I thought Jigglypuff, what kind of animal he would be, but I just didn't nice. think he would be so furry. I'm very pleasantly mm. happy with um, the way that Pikachu looks like. Because um, I was never super into Pokemon. I want to see this Pokemon movie. I, I very, very much do. It's funny because when I thought of uh, Detective Pikachu and, and um, when that was originally announced and then it was announced that Ryan Reynolds was going to be a part of it, I kind of didn't want to fully immerse myself into the news and everything on it. I wanted to be surprised for it, but... Right. I did. I apparently I missed the part where Ryan Reynolds was going to be voicing Pikachu. So when I watched the trailer, I was like, "This is so weird," <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> like, but Ryan Reynolds, he's never like okay. Aside from Deadpool, like Ryan Reynolds from like Waiting, um, what is that college movie? Uh, National Lampoon's Van Wilder's something 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 he's mm -hmm. never had a kid-friendly mouth <laughs> and he's playing pikachu I love um it. i still think they should have cast danny devito for detective pikachu to in place of the guy that i guess pikachu is going to be working with maybe i don't know but I'm going to watch it, and I'm excited for it. As the voice As of the Pikachu. As the voice of Pikachu, yeah. Okay, actually, I could I could actually picture that one. I could. Um, I, I'll admit, I haven't watched a Toy Story 4 trailer yet. I haven't, but the fact that it's Toy Story, I'm, I'm already uh, interested because I love those movies. Uh, Pikachu, the Pokemon stuff... Um, I love Pikachu, the actual cartoon. So um, I will wait and see once it comes to digital for me to watch it at home. Um, I probably won't do a movie theater for that. Um, I think I will. I think I'll go to the movie theater for it. Um... I liked it. I liked how they, they made Mr. Mime. Um, Psyduck I thought was really hilarious. Andrew just doesn't want to be seen watching it. <laughs> Possibly. Maybe that's true. I'll be watching it. I'll be watching it. You know what you should watch is Bohemian Rhapsody is actually really, really good. I watched that last Bohemian night. Bohemian Rhapsody? Yep. The one about Freddie Mercury. I'm going to pretend you didn't say that. <laughs> okay. We're going to pretend right now. <laughs> Queen. It's about the band Queen and Freddie Mercury. Oh, Mercury's yeah, you told me the about biopic, that. You did tell me about The biopic yeah, 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 for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did tell me about that. My bad. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was really good. I, I would have watched um, Fantastic Beasts 2 last night, but... Um, uh, Gutter hasn't watched the first one, so we're going to watch the first one, and then we'll watch the second one. I did get the posters, though. They gave me the mm. posters for the Fantastic Beasts, too. They gave me all four, and I was super excited for that. Um, I may watch Transformer movie for once because Bumblebee got the chick from True Grid and Pitch Perfect. It was... Uh, mm. Yeah, okay. Mission that Impossible that, that Bumblebee movie actually looked pretty good. Yeah, Mission Impossible was dope. If you guys haven't seen the new one, I, I enjoyed it. I need to check out the Equalizer movies. Um, I didn't see the first or second one, so I need to dig into those. But there's Daredevil that still needs to be finished too, and then House of Cards, and then, yeah, there's a couple of things. Oh, I have happening. no doubt that Fantastic Beasts 2 was good. Hopefully I can watch it next week with my sister. I gotta, I'm finding more things to do with my sister. I got to spend more time with her. Equalizer one was good, two was boring. Word. Hope that they may venture to more locations in the other movies. Oh, nice! I hope so. I hope so. Word. 
Uh, we'll take uh, three more. If you got three more questions, we'll take three more, and then we'll we'll begin wrapping up. Talk about Thanksgiving. If you got three more. We'll take those guys. What what's on your mind? Yeah, I probably don't want to be seen watching. <laughs> Maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. I'm very picky about about movies when it comes to uh, doing a movie theater thing. The last one was what Black Panther for me, I think. That was the I last think one. It was. Before that was I can't even tell you. That was a minute. Fourteen forty p. Be in Japan, China, so it'd be nice. I also wanted to see Paris, Diagon Alley, and Ministry of Magic. Those are bands. No, they're from Harry Potter's world. Diagon Alley is. It's all okay. from. It's all from Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> it shows you how much I know about that stuff. The but Ministry they would make Magic really sounds like a band. <laughs> they would to all me. make really great band. <laughs> Trouble, That's you and I I'm should saying. make start up a band called Ministry of Magic. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Thanksgiving, Danielle. What's what's going on? Uh give give us give us a, a glimpse of what's happening with you for, um, for Thanksgiving. What's it's gonna be a very, very small private Thanksgiving. Um my family or our outside family, our aunts and my grandmother isn't gonna be here, they're off elsewhere which is really sad because they were just here for my my uh grandmother's birthday at the beginning of october so it's just gonna be a small one it's gonna be me my family and my sister so the four of us and we're probably gonna be cooking and eating enough food to feed no joke probably around 20 people wow that's intense um actually we we don't have turkey uh my sister is a vegetarian um but she does eat fish so I forget what type of vegetarian that is. Pescatarian? Pescatarian? Yeah, I think yeah. it is. Um, so she's actually uh, cooking some baked stuffed salmon. Ooh. And I am making a prime rib. What? And Where am I going to be at? I need, to, <laughs> I need to roll through. I will have a lot of food for that too. Um Holy. And then on top of that, everything else is just pretty much, we have the staple Thanksgiving foods, like we'll have mashed potatoes, green bean casserole, uh, stuffing, and a pumpkin pie. But we're also nice. making, you know, dishes that are our favorite things. So I'm making lazy sushi rice. Um, my son wants a pasta salad, um, a potato mac salad. Let's see what else is. Um, I think my son is baking a Lilikoi chiffon pie. And then, I don't know, after that, it's just whatever everybody feels like. You guys are doing it right now. Then, what is that? That's a lot of food. It is a lot of food. I'll send you pictures. Yeah. I'll send you pictures of this feast that four people are going to be having. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't do turkeys i have not cooked a turkey or had a turkey thanksgiving in probably five years because um i'm not a fan of turkey i i get well it's not that turkey is bad i like the flavor of it but i get really sick of eating it really really quickly like when it comes to thanksgiving i'll get this single little slice of turkey and i'm good i don't i don't want to eat it anymore so okay. to have a whole turkey nobody's gonna eat it it's just gonna go to waste um okay. and i don't know how to cook a turkey without it being dry mm. yeah it's I don't really got? like chicken, what though. What are you thinking? Trouble says just get turkey wings and our drumsticks. See, like, nobody's going to eat those, though. Mm. Maybe maybe the turkey wings, but not, not really. Yeah. Turkey wings are dope. I just want the skin. I know that's like, the worst part to eat, but I like <laughs> yeah. I like the skin, and that's it. <laughs> 
Like I can eat that for yeah. days. I would I would actually um uh, I don't know. Yeah, you gotta throw I that gravy on that. You you gotta do We'll have we'll on. have the gravy for the mashed potatoes, but that's kind of it. Oh, and because like I gotta have my lotes at TwitchCon, I gotta go and figure out if I can get all the ingredients here locally. Specifically just the cheese, um, from a for lotes and then just regular corn in the cob as well too. But other mm. than that, yeah. So so they got this spreadsheet going on over here on my side where everyone is picking a different dish that they made last year. So originally I was like, yo, this idea is like, I'm not feeling it because I don't want someone who doesn't make macaroni and cheese to make macaroni and cheese. Like, I hope your macaroni and cheese is going to be dope because there's always somebody designated for the thing. And the thing that they make is the thing that everybody wants to eat. And that goes for everybody who makes their thing, right? So whatever that dish is, that's your thing. So this year, they're like, you know what? We're not going to do that. We're going to do something different. This year, we're going to have you pick a dish that you didn't make. So usually, my, my thing is bread pudding because I slay it, right? Every single time, right? But I'm not making that this year. Maybe. I'm, I'm debating. So they have me on this uh, yams thing that I got to make. I'm like, you know what? I'll try it out. Maybe it'll work out. But... um that's 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 what they're doing so they got the spreadsheet going on and everybody got their dish and mac and cheese that tastes sweet what that, kind of sweet that that could be all right like maple brown if, sugar caramelized over the top of it kind of sweet if it's embedded well done into the actual thing i don't i think that could be okay I like I like my mac and cheese fancy. Like, I don't know how to make bougie mac and cheese, but I really like mac and cheese that has like the crab, <laughs> and then the crusted breadcrumbs all over it. Seriously, <laughs> that's like so bougie good. mac and cheese. And I should name this episode bougie mac and cheese. You'd be like, what are you talking about? Why did you name the episode that? I don't know. I might. I just might. <laughs> Uh, but I don't know if that would, you know, <laughs> tell the companies that I talk about their stuff if I named it Bougie Mac and Cheese. <laughs> it's blaming on Daniela. Oh, uh, what kind of cheese is sweet? I can't think of sweet cheese. I don't. I don't know cheese. I know I like cheese, but I don't. I I would try it. I would eat it. Word. Oh yeah, we are very Filipino. Our sp Filipino spaghetti is sweet too. So. I, don't I would know try anything it. about that. Y'all, y'all gotta send me your recipes. You know, I, I'll share, I'll share the um, the bread pudding recipes if you guys want to check it out. I, I made it somewhat vegan this time around. Uh, no egg in it. Uh, obviously sugar with the raisins and stuff like that. It came out really, really amazing. Um, the the trick to doing the bread pudding, as I was telling Daniela recently, is that you cook it longer so the the cooking hours for the bread pudding is two two hours uh, uh, early prep is like what 20 25 minutes or less and you can't leave the bread soaked um the you can't leave it soaked in the milk for a long time i mean i'm talking about seconds so that's the secret don't leave the bread soaking in the milk Get a very dense type of bread, like an Italian loaf or sesame seed loaf type thing. Um, and then uh, cooking time is essential. Has to be the first hour is to burn off most of the sugar stuff and, and dry it up a little bit. Second hour is just messing it up, you know, mi mixing it up and then putting it back for the second hour. And then after that, it's just amazing. Get some pumpkin ice cream with it or vanilla ice cream or something. Just wow. It's just amazing. It's amazing. So, yeah. So, if you guys want recipes, I'll, I'll uh, post it in Discord. I should Word. make maybe like an apple we can and do apple that. bacon mac and cheese will work. We're still the mac and cheese. <laughs> what? Okay, y'all making me hungry. Okay, so, Daniela, <laughs> uh, I'm thankful for you uh, in context. Uh, for being so dope and uh, hanging out with me on the show, as always. 
Uh, you've been a blessing and I appreciate you for all the things that you do that nobody sees. Um, that makes everything easy word. Uh, I appreciate you. So, um, that is all I have for this episode, episode 476. Danielle, if you have anything, uh, let us know and, uh, close us out, please. Well, I'm thankful for you. I mean, man, so almost kind. two years. I realize it's almost two years. Cause this is going to be.